just as as always be, before we get started uh, a big thank you to to all of our clients for all the feedback and everything that you've been giving us to to improve the service uh, it's much appreciated it drives us to do better every single day so please keep that coming if you see anything you don't like let us know as always so we can improve upon um, ourselves there are going to be a few little things that we're going to discuss and we're going to point out today that's coming from all the feedback that we've had. So we're excited uh, about that. Um, very excited. Um, and Chris is going to be detailing a lot of things such as new features, um, something, some updates around the engine, which we've started to roll out. Um, so very, very happy and very excited to, to get into that. Okay. Um, I think we, we've, we've stabilized, Christo. Um, I'm going to hand over, over to you. And uh, I'll be jumping in a little bit later to cover a few other little items, but uh, enjoy it. Cool. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thanks so much, Earl. And thanks, everyone, for joining today. Um, yeah, I think just as Earl said, thanks so much for, for all of the clients, everyone. That's always giving us good feedback. And um, that's how we make the product better. So thanks, everyone, for joining. Um, yeah, I think... Today, I'm just going to run through essentially all of the things on cloud, talk a little bit about what we're, what, what we're working on, um, and uh, yeah, hopefully get everyone excited and, and um, understanding how everything works uh, a little bit better. So uh, just starting off, for the guys who are completely new, if you do want to initially start off a cloud practice on your side, the easiest way to do that, just go to our website, draftworks.com. And in the top right here, you'll see we've got a little cloud login button. If you want to sign up to cloud, simply click there, sign up to cloud. And immediately this takes you through to our little sign up screen. Now this is literally all that's needed for you to sign up. You give us your, your, your practice details, your first name, surname, email address, password, and so on. It's really as simple as that to get started on cloud. Um, this you would do for the person starting the practice. So that's just something to, to take note of. So you're not going to have every single person in your company um, coming to full out and creating their own practice. You want one of the partners to create the practice. Um, so fill in all of your information here. And then the partner is going to invite the rest of the team uh, to to their cloud practice. So just something to note, otherwise each guy sits on his own practice and you're not going to see each other's work. So, and then essentially you just go through here, type in your name. I can just go and say, let's say new company, choose your location, user details, you can fill in email password and you agree to the terms and conditions and sign up. I mean, it's, it's as simple as signing up to uh, pretty much any any site you use, any social media site you use these days, if you want to. So um, yeah, once you've signed up, um, you are going to go to our login page. So I can actually just hop back here, and we can go to our cloud login. Uh, it will automatically log you in. So just automatically log me in because I'm I, I didn't log out last time. So it's just auto log in. If you haven't been auto logged in. You're going to see a screen like this. Put in your email, put in your password, and log in. And that's going to give you your main client listing screen. Uh, this is the first screen we always see when we, when we hop on. And uh, you can see I've got a few clients listed over here. Um, I've got a few basic things in the top here. I've got my practice details and uh, the, the credits on the practice um, and, and a few other things. Now, the very first time that you log in, you are going to get a little bit of an intro. The system's going to take you through a few steps on how to set up your practice. Um, you can just follow those instructions very easy. If you haven't done it, the easiest way to get to your practice setup is going to be clicking on this little gear icon and going to practice settings. Now, from there, we start off on the screen, it just gives us a little bit more information on the practice. So our practice info, it's got our billing address, a summary of my clients and so on. And then it also currently shows me my, my balance of my, my credits, where I can choose to pay now, which is a credit card option, to pay essentially additional credits onto the system um, so that you can go and create your files. And then pay by voucher. If you want to EFT, 
um, you can use the pay by voucher. We send you an email with essentially all of the information you need to do, do the EFT. And then we give you a voucher, which you just enter in here and it will redeem those credits onto your uh, account. Um, so you've got those options available um, in terms of just yeah, doing the, the prepaid credits and getting the credits onto your, your cloud system. So for those of you that don't know, the, um, the credits for, for uh, cloud, we essentially work on a prepaid basis. So it's not like the desktop version where you're paying a license fee monthly or annually. Um, you're actually paying a, a credits onto the system and then per entity that you create, we charge you um, a certain amount depending on the entity. And I'll show you a little bit more of that when I go and create the client my side. You can go to practice details at the top here. And here you're just gonna go and fill in some information on your practice. So give it the, put the name down, the email, the practice address and the reporting as and so on. Those things are important just because it pulls through to your financials. So once you fill it in here, you're not gonna have to repeatedly fill it in every time. Uh, do just make sure that your practice email and telephone number are correct. That is what we use to contact you. Um, if you've emailed us for support, something along those lines, we, we use those uh, details to get a hold of you. Uh, financial statements, very, very simple here. And um, at the moment, it's pretty much just applying a default font. So you can apply a default font to your whole um, essentially a whole practice. So I've said, I want to apply the default font. So all of my financials will have the same font. I don't need to worry about different fonts for different financials or a different font in the same file. You know, if one guy's editing and, and, and maybe doing something, they shouldn't changing font somewhere and something like that. Uh, you're not going to have different fonts on your file. So that's the basics here. This letterhead legacy preview. Very few people will probably still be using this. I think it, this was initially when we inserted letterheads, we had this. Um, you can actually see we've got an end of life notice here. Uh, this is no longer really applicable. We'll probably remove that relatively soon as well. So that was my practice settings. Now, a few other things that we have here that we can just take note of. Um, we've got a little circle here. You can see it's got a C inside of it. So that is my personal profile. Now, obviously on cloud, because we're logging into a practice, we've got the practice settings and then I'm using my email address. So my email address is my personal settings. So if I click there, you can see this is where I've got my profile. And this is very simple. It's just got your um, name, surname, your initials, and you are able to change your passwords from here. So you can go ahead and just change your password, something like that, if you do want to. So um, yeah, easy enough to, to do that. The initials is what you're going to see when you sign off uh, a working paper or something like that as well. So you can just make sure that's set up correctly for you. Then what we also have, we've got this little question mark. This is our tool to help you essentially. So if you do ever get stuck, pop open our little question mark in the top here. And uh, you've got a few options. So knowledge base, very simply, that takes you through to a, a part of um, a little knowledge base we've to put together. So if you wanna see the basics of how to do, let's just say example, uh, import of a TV, you can kind of go to the knowledge base and actually just search it here and say, I wanna see um, my trial balance. And we kind of give you results and you can pick something up here and go and read how to do the import TV. So you can do that. Um, we've got quite a few um, things there and it explains a lot of things. Um, so you can always use the knowledge base if you want to you get to teach yourself how to use the program. Uh, also, if you maybe search the knowledge base and you don't get anything there that, that um, you know, solves your problem, you can just log a support request. Now the, the log a support request, you've got two options here. Um, the, the first option, you can simply send us a mail. You select a client maybe that's got an issue. You type in the issue that you have, put down your contact number, and it sends through an email to our support team, um, and they're going to be able to assist you. Uh, we, we get the email outside. They can, they can temporarily access your file, and they can go and make the changes, or they can give you a call if they need to or so on. 
um, and they'll that will help a lot. Uh, most of the time, you know, the guys can can uh, knock it out the park with with simply that. Um, if you want quick assistance and the fastest assistance, we we pretty much do on our side, is this Team Viewer over here. And you'll see the wording is in blue. Um, it says Team Viewer. We're actually changing this to highlight that a little bit more. So in future, it's going to sit here a little bit bigger. Um, but you can click on that and it actually goes and it downloads a team viewer. It's this custom version of team viewer that downloads to your computer. And for those of you that come from desktop, this is exactly the same remote support that you're used to getting from uh, the desktop side. So once it downloads, you can actually save this team viewer. So it says team viewer QS. You can save that to anywhere on your computer. So save it onto your, your, you know, desktop, um, and you don't need to download it every single time. You can actually just go to the desktop and run it. Um, and when you do run it, you'll actually see it's gonna open a, a little custom version of TeamViewer that we have. And um, it's, uh, it's going to, you just need to accept info and you're gonna get a screen like this. I hope everyone can see this. And it pretty much just shows you, um, it gives you like a little session code um, your name, and this should autofill. It does take a moment to sometimes to, to complete over here. Um, just let me see. Uh, sorry there. <laughs> I'm just quickly going to run that again. But uh, essentially, this team viewer connects to our support team. Um, all of them should be able to assist um, with pretty much everything. Our support team consists mostly of, of ex-accountants, ex-auditors, and um, they really know pretty much any question you can ask them uh, about, about DraftWorks. Um, and they'll always be able to assist you and, and help out there. So that is the, the easiest way to get, um, get in contact with us and probably the fastest way, the team viewer. So there you go. You can see now it has generated a session code for me. It's given me a name. So my name just is DraftWorks. I can click on the little chat icon and you can see it pops up a chat here. And now I can just say, I, I need help. Just type in and this sends it through to our support team and give it a minute to, so I'm sure somebody's gonna respond. Oh, well, there you go. Pretty much instant. You can see somebody's uh, responded and then you can tell them I need help with X, Y, Z and they'll hop onto your computer. They're gonna be able to see your screen. They're gonna be able to move your mouth uh, move your mouse. Um, it's a bit of an interesting experience if you haven't had it before. I remember the first time when I was in my doing my, my articles um, and uh, I had support hop on and they moved my mouse around. It was a very eerie feeling. Um, but yeah, the, the guys are really great and uh, you can sit back and they'll usually fix something for you. They'll probably ask you questions and, and so on. So don't leave your computer to go get coffee. But um, yeah, you can uh, just chat to them and they'll fix the issue for you and show you how to do it and, and um, go on like that. So yeah, I'm just going to say, there you go. Thanks guys. I'm sorted. And um, yeah, so that is our remote support. Please do use it. It's very, very useful. Going from there, as I said, that was our little question mark. Um, now we do have a few other options over here, not too much detail. Um, you can book a demo, you can get started. Getting started is this initial, it takes you to, to a few videos and, and so on that you can um, watch. Although this uh, webinar is pretty much that. And um, yeah, you can give feedback and so on as well. You'll see what we do do quite often um, as we release new updates for, for cloud, we do issue notifications at the top here. Um, and you simply click on the little notification it's going to bring up the notification and you can click there for more detail and it gives you a little description and just tells you what's going on. So we oftentimes use that for new features. So you can see actually this one is a new new file sheet that's that's um, going to be released, well, busy being released. And um, oftentimes if there is maintenance that needs to be done on our servers, there's going to be downtime. We'll also let you know there and so on. So if you do see a little notification at the top, do check it out, see what's going on, new features and, and new things to help you out. What I can also do is I can be part of multiple practices. So from my side, if I use my same email address, um, but let's say I am 
uh, I'm, I'm an auditor and I'm going to go and audit different files from different clients and they, they're working on cloud. So now each of them have their own practice on cloud and they've actually invited me to that, those different practices. You'll see, you'll actually get this select practice um, bar here that you can simply select and I can go and hop through different practices. So currently I'm in training practice. And if I want to go here and I can scroll through and I can say, okay, let's go take a look at Christus practice. It actually goes and it reloads. And now you can see I've got a whole different client list here. So it's a, a whole new practice. All of the, the information is different and, and so on. So you can hop through the different practices and different things um, using that. Then what we can also do is on this gear icon, we can either manage our clients and manage our users. Now, the first thing we've got here is manage clients. And that is for my client files themselves. If I've got any archived or deleted client files, they are going to sit in this list here. So we've got our main list, which is the one that I see over here. If I want to delete something, I would delete it and it goes and sits in the manage clients option. So I'll show you guys how to delete an archive a file now, but you can find them over here. And then if you want to restore archived one, you simply click on restore over here and it restores the file. So that's simply the managed clients. And then the managed users is where you're actually going to invite people to your practice now. So as I said earlier, um, we have got the ability to, I created this practice. So I initially started it up. But now I want to invite all my clerks, managers, other partners, everyone who's working with me, I want to invite them into my practice. And they need to be able to see my clients and obviously go ahead and work and so on. So the easiest way we do that is we simply click on add user. So we click add user and we can type in an email. So I can say new at, you know, a B or whatever. I can go and invite the person, type in their email address and then select the role for the user. Now the role is very important. We've got a clerk, a manager and a partner. So um, the clerk essentially cannot overwrite any, any um, files in draft in, 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 sorry. The clerk cannot overwrite some of the locked formulas on our financials. And I'll show you guys later when we do look at the financials, um, but the clerk cannot go and lock any, uh, unlock any formulas, go and edit it and just force balance things and so on. Um, only your managers and partners can unlock formulas that are locked on our side. Um, and then obviously your sign offs also are dependent on the role. So a partner and a manager, um, you know, sign off at different levels. And, and that's also built into this uh, user role. You can also select the clients that this person actually has access to. So if I'm inviting this person, but I want them to only see a single company on this list, I'm going to just deselect everything and say, this guy is only going to be able to see this training client. And when he logs onto my practice, he's only going to have a single file. He's not going to see everything there. So that is a, a nice way to, to kind of show that um, and, and yeah, protect what you don't want everyone to see and so on. And um, you can actually see I've gone and uh, given Earl different access so I can control his access. So I invited Earl earlier. I've given him uh, access to only ABC schools and a training client. And uh, Earl, if you are that side, you can yeah. maybe just I, uh, quickly share. Can I jump in and show? Awesome. Go for it. Yeah. Okay. So this is this is what I'll see on, on my side when, when Christo is shared and he's only given me access to the files um, that he's deemed that I should have, have access to. That's all I can see. I can't see anything else. Yeah, so, um, exactly that. That's, that's, that's phenomenal. And then that's my crazy. side, if I do go and uh, add him to another one, so I'm going to add Earl to another one on my side. Your, um, share there. My side. Oh, let me grab the share quickly. Cool. Uh, where's my papa? -pa? There you go. Sorry about that. There you go. So, um, okay. So now I'm going to go into the, the client access over here. So I've gone to Earl, client access. 
And I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to give him access to the management pack as well as, let's say, the console. So now he's going to have access to four clients. I'm going to save that. And uh, again, if Earl pops open his screen and he reloads, he should see every, all the extra clients um, on his side. Now, now I've got four on my side. Yeah. Yeah. So easy, that's easy. Uh, as easy as that. You can that's you can add cool. people and and uh, yeah manage essentially who can see what on your file. So it is something that's that's uh, really nice uh, that that a lot of people asked for, and we took a while to get it in, but uh, it, it does give you that flexibility um, that that we really wanted. Uh, if you've got a specific client file as well, so instead of managing from the user access. Um, let's say you've got 10 guys or you've got a huge firm. So you've got over 100 guys, you know, um, different uh, people on your team. So you don't want to go into each one over here and say, okay, well, he's going to have access to this file and this file and kind of manage it per person. You can manage it um, on your client file itself. So if I go into my client file, ABC Schools, I'm going to click on this little button over the year. It says, it says users have access to this file. If I click on it, it shows me who everyone has access. And again, I can go and untick them and remove people who've got access over here, save it, and they will be removed from access of that specific client file. So yeah, again, we've tried to make it as easy as possible that you are able to add in and, and manage who sees what on your side. On this screen, the last thing that I wanna show you uh, particularly here is just a specific client file, if you wanted to actually delete to archive a file, the easiest way to go about it, you can tick the file. And actually, we've got two buttons at the top here, archive, delete, or simply go to these three little lines on the side and you can archive or delete or copy as well. So the copy is very useful if you've got a client that, let's say you're doing a group of companies. So the client has you know, five companies under his name, and um, those guys essentially want to have a, a unique note in, in their financials that DraftWorks doesn't have. So we've got a very, you know, a, a standardized list of notes that, that is compliant with IFRS, but this client wants something extra and additional, and you go and build that note into your, your financials. Now, you don't want to go and build that note for every single file that this, this client has. You're going to go and copy client. And that creates a copy. It creates a copy of the financials as you've edited them. And you can use that essentially almost as a template um, on your side to, to bring that custom note and that custom work that you've done to bring it into your next set of financials for a different company and, and so on. So that is a very useful one to, to use on your side. In terms of adding a new client, so I'm... Uh, starting new and I'm going to say, cool, I want to do a completely new client. I go to the top here where it says add client, just click on that and it's going to pop open this little drop down for you over here. And with this drop down, I can now start going and, and filling in my client details. So obviously client name, one of the first ones I'm going to go fill in here. So let's just say uh, DraftWorks webinar and um, select the country. So one of the nice things we have with cloud is you've got a multiple country selection. Um, so if you do have maybe a client, you know, from one of the neighboring countries and from South Africa, um, uh, then you can select that. You can see this list over here is essentially the clients we have localized for. Um, and you can kind of choose uh, the different ones here at the moment. Now, the second thing we need to select, and this is probably the most important thing, is our framework. The framework selection is what type of entity you are doing financials for. So if I go to my framework, I click on my little drop down, you can see we get a list over here. It's quite a long list. That's because there's a whole bunch of different financials that we have. So you choose essentially over here what you're going to do. So if you're doing a closed corporation, so select the closed corporation here. Yeah. IFRS SME, that's for your standard, you know, uh, smallish PTY limited companies. We've got nonprofit organizations and companies, schools, sole proprietors, all these different things. 
And here's where you see the pricing model for cloud come into play. So as I said earlier, it's not an annual license fee. It's not a monthly license fee. You pay for only what you use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and say, if I want to do an IFRS SME file, it's going to cost me 230 Rand. Okay. Then most of the other files is about 115. Sole prop, 58. I mean, yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's pretty much uh, <laughs> the, the, the cost of a burger these days for a whole set of financials. And um, the full IFRS, a little bit more, 2,300. Obviously, for the corporates that are doing full IFRS, um, it's, it's quite a big standard update and so on. And that's why there's a big price difference. So I'm going to go IFRS SME+. Plus. That's generally how plus statements are our newest statements. Um, the guys from, from uh, desktop, again, if you're similar to it, um, well, the guys that have been around for, for, for the long with desktop would be would remember our, our older statements. And we do have them here for you. So you can scroll down and you can find the legacy statements. And those are our original statements from what I think about 2008, back in the day um, when Earl initially did, did everything. Um, so we've got them in place if you do want to stick to the to the, the old financial templates. But the plus financials are our latest and greatest, and uh, we really love them. They have so much more in terms of disclosure. Um, they, they cover disclosures, a lot more disclosures than the, the older templates. And they also allow us to do really cool things. They allow us to go and edit parts of the file um, without touching any of the previous work that you've done. So it allows us to up to, to implement updates from IFRS a lot easier without doing any of your custom work. We're not gonna overwrite any of the custom work and so on. So very, very cool that the plus statements have those kind of things in. The next thing I would select is working papers. Now this is essentially the, the, the thing that I'm doing from my side as, you know, uh, as the as the accountant or auditor, what, what am I doing? Am I doing compilation, a review? Um, am I doing an accounting officer's report? What am I doing for my client? And this adds additional working papers to your file that's essentially going to um, uh, yeah, be, be extra working papers where you can complete your compliance and all of that for a review or for a compilation and so on. Um, for the auditors out there, we are busy working on our, on our audit working programs. They are just extremely complex um, and made by the, the, the geniuses. So they've got a thousand formulas um, that, that needs to run and, and the system struggles with it. But we are working with it to, to make it uh, get in there and, and we're uh, hoping to get I, them in. I believe there's, there's basically one working paper that, we, that we're left to struggle with. Um, no. But it's, we, we've, we've made a plan. So... It's coming yeah. soon. It's coming soon. Uh, I've said that for a while now. Yeah. Um, each time I say it's coming soon, we hit something else uh, and we go, oh no, we have to get around this. We have to develop, we have to problem solve. Uh, yeah. But it's now thankfully imminent. So um, yeah. you, you'll see our working papers are going to expand quite a lot. You'll, you'll see uh, legal practitioner, uh, property practitioner when that mm. breaks, um, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> Uh, touch wood in the in the next in the in the next few months. So um, excited about about that to finally get that out. Yeah, yeah. All, all can't see me, but I'm holding on to my wooden desk right now, just touching all the wood that we can, because it is like you said, it's been a tricky one. We, <laughs> yeah. we keep getting weird errors and, and things pop up, and we just like, how does this even happen? But uh, yeah, uh, we were getting there, and we're excited to get that out to you guys soon. Um. So, so once I've selected my working papers, I'm going to select compilation. You will see there is an extra fee attached to that. So we, we it's again, it's additional things that we're adding onto your file. So you do then have a charge for that. Once I've selected that, I go through and I'm just going to select what tax year am I doing for my file. So if you're doing one, you know, going backwards, you just scroll down, select that, select your tax year end date. Very simple, select whatever the year end date is and um, yeah, pop it in there. And then you can select the period that you're doing. So how many months are you doing these financials for? 12 months is our default. If we're doing maybe shorter management accounts, you know, you can just switch down or if you're doing a bigger file, you can go um, all the way up to 18. For our South African guys, 15 is our limit, I believe, um, just in terms of Companies Act and so on. 
The last selection we've got here is industry. Um, this is something that we're also looking to give you a little bit more out of DraftWorks in the future. So what we want to do is if I go and select the industry over here, so let's say my client is in the agriculture industry, what we want to be able to do for you in the future is rather than just give you financial statements, we want to actually be able to give you things like KPIs and comparatives uh, of your client against the industry's averages and, and so on. So it's something that we think will, will add a lot of value, um, especially, you know, as, as accountants, we sometimes just get screamed at because we're like giving people how much tax they should pay. And um, we want to be actually give you the ability to give your client uh, more, more than just financials, more than just like, um, yeah, telling them this is how much tax you need to pay, giving them insight into the industry that can obviously help them grow. Because so if they grow, you grow. And if you grow, we also grow. Um, so yeah, one of our nice things that we're looking to add in on the future. Then I am happy with my selections. I can see how much this client is going to cost. So 345 for this file. And I've got my prepaid credit here, so I'm fine to pay for that. And I can just say add client. And um, it goes and builds my, my, my file, 345 Rand for financial statements with XBR included. Not a bad deal at all. Um, so it takes us through to our little startup page. It's now gone and created the file for me. The startup page is just there to try and kind of assist you um, and give you guidance of the steps that we're going to follow to complete these financials. Um, so you can see it says client setup. So that's always the first place we go. We go and set up our client details. Um, you know, all the things that need to pull through your company tax number, all of those kind of things, or registration number and those kind of things. Um, we then capture the TB, then we link that TB, we work on the financials, and the very last thing, if it's required, we do XBRL. So this is a bit of a guide um, that just takes you step by step through um, the, the process. And again, you can manage users from here as well. Um, so that's again, if you want to say, oh, but only certain people must have access, I can go and pop these off uh, on my side. So um, yeah, that's pretty much just a little startup there to help you. The first thing we are going to then start off with is the client setup. So I can either click on, on the, this over here and it's gonna take me directly to my client setup, or I can go and click on this drop down, client setup, and just hit client setup again. And this takes me through to the client setup. Now, what we've got here is all of the details, all of the settings, the things that we're gonna pull through for the client, the business address, all of those things. It also has customization options and so on. So in the past, we, we did find that the client setup was quite confusing in terms of where everything sat and so on. What we've gone and done is we've tried to make it easier for you to kind of put the settings aside that, that are the main settings that need to be completed. Um, and we've put them all under quick settings. So the idea here is what we've done is the quick settings, if I complete all of these, so go and fill in my registration number, you know, legal form of entity, your, your, you know, when the financial statements are approved, your date of signature, all of these things, those are the important things that we have to have on a file. We can't have a company without a registration number here. So we, we have to have that. So that's why it's here. Now, we've kind of gone and included all those things in our quick settings. And then the other settings um, that's, that's further down the list are kind of additional things that you don't have to enter, but you can if you want to. So if we go here, we go and I've got my, you know, registration number. So, you know, I can just go and fill in a random number there. Um, we put on nature of business our, our addresses, all of those kind of things we go and fill out because it's going to pull through to the financials. We then scroll down a bit. Our secretarial info, also a very important one. Who are the directors? Who are the shareholders? So I'll go in here. And I'm going to say, Earl. I'm going to go and say, when was he appointed? You can put in the appointment date, registration, uh, resign date if they're resigning, nationality, all of these kind of things. You don't have to complete all of this, but uh, complete as needed. And you can see what we've done. As soon as I typed in, in, the, in the green bar that Earl's a director, I can go and type in an additional one here. 
So I can go through here and say, you know, let's say Christy. And uh, oy, there you go. We can go and do that as well and type in all the different things. Um, if you have a, a director and a shareholder, you can click on the little copy button. It's the same person. So we copied Earl down into our shareholders. So there you go, very easy to do that. We can also remove one. So if I'm just like, okay, wait, Christy's not a director, there you go, pop. And I've deleted it. And now we just have the, the, the one left there. So we can go through and very easily on the green bar, just go and add an additional director, an additional shareholder as needed. And you'll see this green bar is on our side everywhere as well in our um, essentially any grid that we have. So this is a grid. You can see we've got the columns, the headings, all of that. So anywhere we've got a grid and you see this green bar, that's where you're going to add an additional of whatever you're adding. So in this case, it's directors and shareholders. On our working trial balance, we can add a new line item for our working TB. Um, in the journals, we can go create a new journal and so on. So if you know how it works here, you, you can just apply that same rule across the board um, for all of those. Scrolling down a little bit further, we also get to our financial years. Now, this is one that, that's, if you're doing a normal annual financials, you're probably not even going to worry about this one because it's going to be preset for you. So it's going to be preset for two years to present. You can move this up. So you can go and present five years if you want. It shows a lot more detail um, if you really wanted to do that. Or if it's the first, first year of trading for the company, switch it down to one. It's only going to show you a single year then. So I can go ahead and, and change that if I, if I want to. Now, one that we do see that pops up quite often is clients have to do a management account. And what we often see is, you know, it's that typical, typical thing, right? We have a client and he calls us and he says, listen, I've got a meeting at the bank at three o'clock. I need financials for the three months or the four months that we've done so far in the year. And there's panic stations and everyone's running around and they need to do financials. And um, we go ahead and one of the things that you have to do on our side for DraftWorks is you have to go and tick this management accounts option because we aren't doing full year annual financials anymore. So I can go and tick this and you can see as soon as I tick that, we actually generate these extra override periods for you on cloud. Now, that's one of the nice things with cloud. We just pop it open there for you and you can go and change the year end date um, of, you know, whatever it needs to be, be set as. So I'm going to say, you know, I'm not doing year end statements. I'm going to do, let's say, for the, for the three months end in May. And I'm going to change the reporting period to three months. And now the wording on the financials changes to actually say management accounts for the three month period ended um, 31 May. 2022. So it's essentially these tick boxes and this reporting period change, it just changes the wording so that the dates are correct um, on your financials. Now, if I'm doing full year annual financials, obviously that isn't needed. I'm just going to untick that and set us back to the reporting period here to 12 months. So we've got everything back as it was when we started. Then we get to additional disclosures. Now, the additional disclosures are all the extra things that aren't particularly requirements. So these are the things that are not part of quick settings, but they're just general settings for things you might want to fill in for this company. So, you know, if they've got a holding company, you'd fill it in. If you want to show your tax number for the, for the client, just type that in and we will show it then on the financials. But we've kind of tried to move it out of the quick settings because these are not required. If my... Quick settings are all filled in and my secretarial info is pretty much filled in. I'm almost good to go. We don't need to worry about the additional settings. They're only there if you want to go and add or specifically change certain things that are here. Contact info, just put in the info for your client. Um, your firm details, you can see this is pulled through automatically already from my practice um, info that we filled out earlier. If you've got an additional, um, uh, you know, a, a additional practice that's maybe you're compiling and they're auditing, or you're auditing, they're compiling, you can click on the show additional practice settings and it gives you a space where you can just go and type in the additional uh, settings as is needed um, for, for that uh, additional practitioner. 
going down a bit further, we now get to the customization section. And this is one of the sections that a lot of people get a little bit intimidated by because they're like, whoa, what, what are these things? You know, what's, what's happening here? It's a lot of nitty gritty things um, that are listed here. But at the end of the day, to be very honest with you, you don't even need to touch these. The financial statements, layout customization, you don't even need to worry about it most of the time. Because again, it's, it's things where you're kind of, um, it's an outlier if you want to go and change these. So most of the time, you're probably not even going to worry about these. You're just going to leave the, the custom, the, the default settings that we've already done for you because we've selected the default settings out of what we see clients use the most. So that being said, if you do want to come through and customize things, we generally go through and, and the, the first set we've got is some layout customization. Now, the layout customization is particularly things that change the, the whole layout of the financial. So it, it changes um, like quite significant things in terms of where certain notes um, kind of sit, where the accounting policies sit, what details are showing on the, the um, statement of financial position and so on. So we start off with the, the detail line options, the detailed line options over here. And um, what you'll see is we've got, it says investment, provisions, intangible assets, all of these little tick marks boxes. Now, we're not sure what each one means. And, and what it essentially just means is we're going to show additional information on this, um, essentially on the statement of financial position uh, about this section. So if I take investments, for example, investments at the moment, because it's not ticked, investment is a combination of joint ventures, uh, associates, and subsidiaries. So it's a single line item on my statement of financial position, and it's a combination of those three, um, three items. If I then go and I've got the print detail line options and I go and tick this, then it's going to print the detail on the statement of financial position. So now it's going to print the detail for investment. So it's now going to say my joint ventures alone. It's going to be my associates alone, and it's going to be my subsidiaries. All of them get their own own um, line essentially then on the statement of financial position. So you can choose to show extra detail or um, you know less detail. Again, we've gone and defaulted the other financial liabilities and assets for you to be on because most clients want to see that detail there. We've got a few other options here. You can switch between different things. One of the very nice ones we've got in place, accounting policies. And uh, what we do is we've got accounting policies either separate, that's the traditional way that you're used to seeing it. So that has your accounting policies on, on one page essentially. And then you've got all of your notes after all of the accounting policies. And one of the things we've seen that a lot of people start using is the combined with notes option. Um, and it's really, really nice, especially for your bigger sets where you've got, uh, you know, 20 or 50 pages of notes. And now you're sitting with your accounting policies all at the front of the, the notes. And you have to page and scroll for days just to try and kind of read what the accounting policy says versus what the note is actually showing. So the combined with notes is very nice. And what it does is it simply takes the accounting policy and puts it above the note that it's relevant to. So we're going to have the PPE accounting policy, and then we're going to have the PPE note. And then below that, we'll have you know, the inventories accounting policy, and then the inventory note. Makes it a lot easier to read, and it's one of the very, very nice things that you know, we find very useful. Um, and a lot of our, our, our bigger corporates also love that feature to just switch that over. The second one that we have here in terms of customization, the second heading is visual customization. And the visual customization is simply things that's there to, to kind of, as it says, change visual options. So it's things that don't have like a, a drastic effect on the financials, but it's just how things look. So a simple example would be capitalizing sheet headers. If I tick this on, then it's going to capitalize all of the headings in my sheets, in my different um, different sections of the financials, um, or our signature date, we can go through and on the signature date, we can actually say, show, show us the date. And if it shows us the date, then if we hop back um, here to the, the quick settings, 
I can, then it's going to use this date, date of signature. And that's the date that's going to show on my, you know, above all my signatures and so on. If I go back down to visual customization and I say, okay, I don't want to use the signature date. I want to leave it as a blank line. Then it's no longer going to insert that date for you. It's just going to leave a blank line. And the guy who's actually signing can just complete the date as is. So it's useful for if you've got, you know, that situation where you completing the financials today, but maybe the client's only going to sign it in a, a couple of days or a couple of weeks. It is useful to just have that in place. Um, we also do have a few other options here, thousands grouping. So do you want a comma or a space to split your thousands? So uh, very simply, if you've got a, a comma, it would be, if I'd have a thousand rand, it would be one comma zero, 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 whereas the space would just be one and then a space zero, zero, zero. So again, just visual options and so on that you've got to play around with. And then the last section we've got on the client setup is actually just naming conventions. Um, and this is for those unique clients of yours that have different naming conventions for different things. Maybe they don't like to refer to, you know, the management as a director. Maybe they want to refer to the man management as partners. Um, a, maybe it's a law firm or something along those lines. You can kind of go and just change it over here. And you can see we change the plural, the singular apostrophe and the singular or the plural with apostrophe for you kind of across the board. And all that that does is it changes the naming convention across the board on your financials. So all of your reports kind of say the same thing. And we've got a lot of different options here. So I can switch, as you see, management. Um, I can refer to, um, am I presenting profit or loss or surplus and deficit? And um, you can change it. Is it dividends or distributions? All of these kind of things. So you can go and um, just customize pretty much all of the wording that's going to show up in your reports um, uh, from here. And uh, it's just the easy way to do it. You don't have anything that you've missed uh, back in the past. Again, this is one of the, the things that's actually part of our newer plus financials. So the guys that are still on the legacy financials, you don't get this easy customization. It's a little bit harder to kind of go and um, customize the wording across the board one shot uh, for you. Um, but yeah, that is my client setup. So I've gone through and I've set up all of my client details. The nice thing with the client setup as a whole is we're, it's going to save all of this information for me permanently on this client. So next year when I roll forward, if I've gone and made any changes here, we're going to keep those changes in place for you. We're not going to go and change it so that next year I need to come through and do the whole same thing over again. That would just be a waste of time. So you fill in the client setup once, you complete all of the fields, and once you've done that, it, um, it saves it across the board for you. So you don't need to continuously redo um, work, essentially, your side. Once we're done with the client setup, the second step is actually going to be uh, bringing in our working trial balance. So to get to my working trial balance, the quickest way that I do is just go to financial data at the top here, working trial balance. And that gives me my working TB screen. And you'll see it's got essentially no information at the moment. Obviously, this is a new client, so I don't have any info here yet. Um, but we do start and we can already recognize we've got this grid um, that I mentioned earlier. So this green bar on the grid is if I want to add in a new, um, you know, a new account on my TB. So let's just say new line item. I can give it well. I can give it a name or a number. To be honest, the account just needs to be unique. It doesn't have to be a number. So I can do that, or I can do that, and whatever I want. And uh, I can go type that in and hit enter, and it creates a new line item for me. You can see it's added it in and, and so on. And I can go and update the balance and put in balance and so on. So I can go and do that on my side. If, if you want to make life difficult for yourself, then that's the way that you're going to bring in your TB um, because that's generally what we don't want to do. We want to bring in the TB with an import. So I've gone and created this new line item. That's fine. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to just zero it out here. And we're going to bring in a trial balance using Excel. 
So um, at the moment for, for DraftWorks Cloud, we've got Sync. That Sync connects to your Sage Online, QuickBooks Online, Pastel, and Xero. And it can connect to them and pull your data directly in from there. Um, and all we'll show you guys how Sync works now. Now it's really awesome. Uh, it's it's got some very nice features and, and things that that are in place. Outside of that, then if we've got something that is not on those different uh, accounting packages, then you can use an Excel import. So the Excel import is um, the part of the the financials that we're just going to import straight, essentially uh, pull in my TV straight from an Excel. So what we can do here is we can just click on Excel and I'm gonna select file. And the file select, it's gonna give me a little pop-up where I can go on my computer and I can go around and see, okay, cool. I want to show, um, you know, what my different, um, uh, where, where my Excel is, just, just the navigation. And I just go and find my, Training TV, there you go, and I click on open. It opens up my Excel in this little um, viewer over here. And this is actually my Excel. You can see it's got everything. I can actually switch sheets even if I want to and so on. So you can pop open this Excel. And now we need to bring this Excel into DraftWorks. You don't need a specific format. So a lot of places, you know, you need to have a, a special format needs to have column A, B, C exactly right. Now we don't want to do that. All that we need is we just need your data in columns. So as long as everything sits in a column, we can, we can tell DraftWorks this column contains this data and then it understands everything that it reads there and it can pull it through correctly. So what we need from our side as DraftWorks is we need account numbers, account names and debit and credit amounts. Um, now, immediately when people hear account numbers, they panic because a lot of the newer accounting systems don't use account numbers anymore. Don't worry about that. If you are using something like Sage Online or Xero, the guys who don't use account numbers anymore, you can use your account names for account numbers. You don't have to have numbers as long as they are unique. Um, so you can't have two names that say sales you have to have some kind of differentiator between those names. But um, the way that I then go and tell the system, okay, my account numbers sit in this column is I simply click on this little box that says account number. And then in my Excel, I'm gonna click on the column that where my, where my account numbers um, are. So in this case, it's gonna be column B. So I can click on column B. And um, it immediately, you can see it pulls through a little B over here at the top to tell me it's pulling from column B. And it also gives me a preview. It gives me a preview of what it's gonna pull in. Um, now, if you look at this preview, the first thing that you will notice is it says it's gonna pull in draft books training for the year ended and an account heading. And that's actually the headings that I've got in place over here. Um, now we don't want to pull in headings, right? We, we actually just wanna pull in from, from row five over here. So row five is where my data actually starts. And the way we can set that is just to go through and here where it says from row, it's currently one. I'm gonna just switch that and click up all the way to five. And what this tells the system, it says from row five is where the data needs to start pulling from. And you can see now, it's actually ignoring my headings. And, and the first thing that it pulls in is gonna be my, um, my uh, account number thousand. So that's just an important one to note. One of the nice things that we do have in place though, is if my, if my from row is one and um, I do the account number selection again, and I actually select the cell where the data starts. So I'm gonna select B5. You can see it automatically switches my from row to five. It's just one of the nice things, a little tip um, that I like to use. I click on the cell, then you don't need to worry about that because it's going to automate it for you. I'm going to go to my um, account names then. Again, as I said earlier, we click on the box and then we, so I'm going to click on the cell there and you can see now it says C and, it, and my preview again updates with the new information. 
my debits and credit amounts, I can do the same with. So there's debit and credit. And once it's got all of that info in, that's pretty much your TB. Um, again, one of the important things that we also often see, maybe your accounting system doesn't split your debits and credits into two different columns. It combines everything into a single column. So if that is the case, you'll see in column J over here, I've got everything combined. Just select your debit and your credit amounts to both be column J. And now it's going gonna, it's gonna to combine the, 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 the um, data being pulled in. And our credit amounts are anything that's negative in this J column. So you can see the sales amount there. It's negative, so it sits in credit automatically. So that is one of the nice things. You don't need to have, again, you don't need to have your, your Excel in a specific format. If it's combined or, or your debit and credit separate, it's essentially whichever way it will work for the system. So we've got all of that there selected. We have then this one last option over here, and that's import into. Now the import into, it says opening balance at the moment. One thing to note with Draftix, what we mean with opening balance, especially when you're doing your, your annual financials, opening balance on our side is essentially your final year end figures before you as the accountant or auditor go and make your year end adjustments. So we call it opening balance. It's generally your year end figures. Um, the only time you're really going to change this is if you are doing monthly management accounts. So Draftworks does have monthly management account templates and you are able to go and then pull in monthly data. Um, so I can pull in one month alone and so on. So you kind of have the, those um, abilities in place. You can even pull in monthly budget data. So that's also part of our um, management pack. You can compare your monthly value versus your budget value and so on. So some nice features if, uh, if you are looking for management packs. In this case though, I'm gonna go through, I'm just gonna import into opening balances and I'm gonna just say uh, import. And that goes through and it actually pulls in my whole Excel. You can see everything's been pulled in over here and I sit with my account numbers, account names, and then all of the, all of the values um, from my side. So very easy to kind of pull in your data. Now, usually when you are doing a set, you want to pull in your comparatives as well. And your comparatives can be pulled in extremely easily. Um, all that we need to do is in the top left here, we need to click on add prior. So we click on that and you can see the system generates a prior year for me. So it's now gone and generated 2021 for me. And I've got 2022 still. So if I click back on that, you can see my amounts are still here. But if I click back to 2021, I've got my accounts are the same, my num names are the same, but the balances are obviously not the same, they're zero. So I can now go and bring in my prior year information and it's exactly the same way that we did it before um, via the Excel. So I'm gonna go to my Excel again, select my file, go and find my file on the computer, it gives me the same screen. Now, this doesn't have to be the same file. I have the, I have the same file on my side. It can be a different Excel. And then you just do the same process as before. So you're gonna to go to your account number, click and click, and you can see it's the same as before. We're gonna do the account names and I'm gonna scroll a bit across and we're gonna do our prior year debits and credit amounts. And we've got all of that in. Um, one thing you guys also would have noticed, we do have this link slash map number um, uh, button. This is for if you guys have um, data from either a, a, another Draftworks file. So if you've got an Excel export from, you know, maybe a, another accountant's Draftworks or something like that, and your Excel actually contains the linking that Draftworks has, you can actually use that and it's going to, um, pull in the linking process, uh, everything for you. And then you won't have to go through the linking process, which we're going to do now now. So it's one of the, one of the, nice, um, one of the nice things with uh, um, linking that we've got in place. And um, with map numbers, one of the new features we're uh, pushing in now is we're actually going to be able to read the map numbers uh, from another accounting package and automatically convert that to our linking. So a very new feature if you guys are, uh, very nice feature 
uh, if you are moving over to DraftWorks for the first time. Um, it's uh, going to make your life a lot easier. Now, again, I'm happy with all of my selections. I can take a look at the preview. Everything looks in place. And then I can just say import. And now I've got both years information in here. So I've got my 2022 as well as my 2021. I've got my comparatives in place. We can add multiple years. Ideally, you want three years. Um, the reason being, if you've got three years of data for us, we can automate your cash flow as well. Um, as you guys would know, a cash flow, essentially, if I only have two years of data, I cannot automate my prior year cash flow. I need to have that third year of data so that my prior year cash flow can be automated. So ideally, you want three years. Um, but yeah, obviously, we can do, and, and the system still operates perfectly fine with uh, just two. The next step, essentially, that, we, that we've got is... Um, and this is one of the things I like to do if I ever do financials on, on your for clients and so on. What we do is once I've imported everything, so I've imported my years and so on, the first thing that I go and do is I go to my delete options. Now, that's a little bit counterintuitive, but it is one of the tips I love sharing because it saves you a lot of time very often. Um, and once you've imported all of your data, go to the delete options and go to the very bottom one, remove empty accounts. And all that, that the remove empty accounts does is it goes through the system and it takes out any accounts that are zero across your years. And the reason I do that before I start my linking process is because it's gonna save me time. It's gonna get rid of the, the accounts that I don't need, that I don't need to, to kind of worry about it all on, on my side. So, that is uh, just a useful little tip. So once you've imported everything, go through, remove empty accounts. It's just going to clean up your TV for you nice and quick um, and, and save you some time. The next step that we now need to go and do in DraftWix is we need to go and essentially pull through and do the linking. Um, the linking is pretty much the most important process in DraftWix because you're telling the DraftWix system that you know, bank charges is an expense account or that you've got a loan here to Mr. Draftix that's supposed to go to, you know, uh, current assets or current liabilities or whatever it is. So you need to tell Draftix where this account needs to go because we don't just know where it should be going. So it is pretty much the most important process when you are working on Draftix. And um, we generally, yeah, if you get it wrong, you're probably going to see things not going to the right place. So yeah, do try uh, just make sure that your linking is correct. What I do on my side to, to do the linking is I would go through and say show hide link numbers. There are two other linking processes as well. The show hide link numbers is the nicest for me because what it does is it gives me a nice split screen. Um, I've got on my left hand side, I've got my, my TB. And on the right hand side, I've got all of the draft hooks link numbers. And you can actually even move this around a bit and, you know, kind of scroll through and, and, and adjust however you want. It's a very nice screen, very easy to follow along. And uh, what we've got on this side is we've got the draft works linking. And you'll see we've got different columns. Now, the first column we've got is the link column. And that's essentially the link number that we assign to an account. And then we've got the actual details. The details is what that account is. So you can see you've got a VAT account over here. It's going to tell you it's a VAT account. The type of account, that's essentially just the breakdown of is it going to the balance sheet or is it going to the income statement? So a very, very high level overview. The disclosure description we'll cover in a bit. I'll, I'll show you how we use that. And then we've got the category. And the category is essentially is it a current liability or an asset? You see, there's my current assets. If I scroll down a little bit further, we can see expenses. So the category, you can, if, you, if you're not sure like where something should be going, you can take a look at the category and you can see, okay, well, there's non-current assets. If we go down a bit further, we'll see non-current liabilities and so on. So the category column, very useful to, to see where a certain link is going to pull data to. Now, as we go through the process of linking, we don't want to scroll through to try and find my link. So I've got sales over here. So 
if I go through my sales, I can scroll through for days. And I mean, it's going to take me a while to find my, my sales account. So what we've got at the top here is we've got these orange filter bars. And they are there to, to filter out anything with the wording that I type into the filter. So uh, with, with sales, what I could do is I'm going to go and say sales. I can type it in. But you can see, I actually end up with installment sales agreements, cost of sales. I still end up with a whole lot of things. Now, that's one of the things you do need to learn with DraftWorks. The wording is sometimes a little bit different to what you're used to. In the case of sales, the wording is actually going to be revenue. And um, you can see when I, when I type that in, I start off and I've got, okay, construction contracts. And if I'm like, okay, wait, this isn't right. I can read there. I can see this is balance sheet. It's a current asset. That's definitely not the right item to go to. Um, but if I scroll down a little bit and look down uh, further, you can see here I've got revenue, sale of goods. I can see it's an income statement item. I can see the category says income. And so I'm pretty sure that is the correct one that I'm looking for. And very simply then to link it, to actually do the linking process, all that I do is I double click. I double click on the link on this side. I'm going to say the double click happens and you can see it immediately populates the link over here. So very useful to, to uh, just double click and it pulls through automatically to the next blank open link. So you'll see if I do fees received, I can go and type in fees. Now, with the fees received one, what I've got here is I get some things that I don't want. I get cost of sale fees. I scroll down, I get accounting fees, secretarial fees. This is not relevant to me. This is, I'm looking for an income item, right? Now, if I scroll down more, I eventually get to revenue fees, which is the item that I am looking for. But I've got all of these other things in the way that I don't want. And the way that you speed up your process of linking is to actually look at the prefix of the link number. So if you look at these link numbers, we've got these cost of sales ones and it's got this 210, 001, but at the very front, it's got COS. And if we go down for the accounting fees, which is an expense, it's got E. And so if you, if you look at these and compare it to the category, the category, depending on the type of category that we're in, depends on the prefix on my link number. So now if I scroll down a little bit, we get down to I, which is for my income items. So if you are doing this process of actually doing linking and, and so on, and you're saying, I know, I know that this is a fees received. I know it's an income item, right? I can actually just go in here, type in I, put a dot behind it, I dot. I'm gonna go and say fees. And now fees comes all the way to the top. And now I don't get my, you know, my cost of sales, my expenses above this fees link. I actually get it running all the way to the top. So it's very useful if you know the link number or the link prefix, you can use the link prefix to kind of guide your, your searches over here. Um, and it makes it a lot quicker to kind of find what you're looking for. Um, if you aren't sure what our link numbers are, especially if you're starting out with DraftWorks, our link numbers are sometimes a little bit strange. We've got like just a C. Now, what is just C? It's, a, it's, it's something that can go either be a current asset or a current liability. So if you take that, for example, I could be owing SARS, they could be owing me. So it's a, just a C item and it's, it kind of uh, can flip flop between the two. Now, the first time that you're using DraftWorks, you're not gonna know which link to use. If that is the case, go and use the category. Um, it works exactly the same. So now I can go and say, I can just type in income and then type in fees over here. And it, it's, it's pretty much exactly the same thing as using my prefix on the link numbers. Um, and then again, I'm just gonna double click and it pulls it across to the next blank row. So if we've got cost of sales, we're gonna go and the process that we follow, I'm gonna go say, put in the prefix, 
I'm parting cost of sales over here. And you can see the very first one's already sale of goods. So just putting in the prefix already found my link for me. And then I can double click and it pulls across that linking um, on my side. So that's just basically how the linking works and how you can search through the linking on our side. So use this prefix on the link number, use the category and then the details, combine those and you're gonna, you're gonna find what you're looking for. You do oftentimes get a statement. And remember again, when I was in my articles, we had a few clients who had 10 repairs and maintenance accounts and to link those one by one is just a schlep. It's, it's, a, it's a big mission. Um, what we do to, to try and save you that time is you can multi-select items on this side. So here I've got three advertising accounts. So I can either go and I can select Let's say I've got the, just these two. I can select the one at the top, hold shift on my keyboard, select the one at the bottom. It's going to select everything between my two selections. So if I click on that top one, hold shift, click on the bottom one, you can see it's selected all of the accounts in between. But that's what I don't, I don't want that in this case because my bank charges and cleaning are also then going to go to advertising. I want to just select these three accounts. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to click on the one over here hold control in on my keyboard, click on the other one, click on the other one. You can see those three are now the only ones that are highlighted. And I can go through and I can search advertising. And you can see we've got advertising. If I double click, it's gonna pop to all three of those. So very, very nice to kind of just use that, that multi-select to um, just easily search and find what you're looking for. Uh, very, very quick and easy. If you link something incorrectly, so I've gone accidentally and I've accidentally double clicked on this side or something along those lines. Now my bank charges is going to interest paid in advance. It's going to a balance sheet item. Everything is wrong. Don't panic. There's no stress. All that we're going to go and do is we're going to go and say bank charges. We're going to find the correct link and we can fix this up. We're going to drag and drop it. So I hold in my mouse, click on, click on my details, hold in my mouse. And once I drag, you can see it now has a shadow, that kind of a shadow of my bank charges there. And I'm just gonna pull it all the way over here and drop it. And there you go, bank charges is now linked. And it's updated that account. So drag and drop, very useful for if you make a mistake, um, you can fix it very, very quickly and easily just with dragging and dropping across um, to anything that you need. So that's the basics of the linking that I've now used over there. We do have another way that you can link. This was the show hide link numbers button over here. So I can click it off again, then it hides it. Then I just have my TB again. What I can do as well, if you've got individual linking that you want to do, you can go and click on this little blue icon over here, this little blue box. And you can click on that. I can click there. And it pops open the same link list as what we had on the side there. It just pops it open here, where I can then go and say, okay, this is cleaning. Find my cleaning and just say select or simply double click on it here. And it links it there as well. So the single, the single selection linking is usually used for, for, for like one of two circumstances. Um, it's generally a case of if, you, if you've got maybe made a mistake somewhere or something isn't right, you can just quickly pop open here and change the linking rather than use the show hide. Um, and the other case that we sometimes see is if you have an account, now let's scroll down here a little bit. I've got, uh, we've got a loan here to Earl or yeah, from Earl. So we've got a loan there. And let's say last year, this loan was a non-current asset. But this year, it's a current asset. Now, how do we process that? Because each year, we need to have a different one. So my normal linking might be maybe I've rolled forward and I've got my loan uh, to from owners. And you can see we've got short-term loans to or from owners. And we've got long-term loans to or from owners. So there's non-current and there's current. Okay. So let's say it was linked last year. It was linked to non-current. But now this year, this loan has has changed. So now this year, it's a current it's a uh, a current liability. Now I need to change it. 
what I'm going to do is I can click on that again. I can go and find my uh, owner's loans. And this time I'm going to go find the short term one. So there it's the current one. It says short term there as well. And I'm going to select current only. And what that actually does is it makes so that this linking for only for this year, it's a current liability. In my prior year, and if I click on it over here and we scroll down, you can see loan Earl is still the non-current. It still has the N there. It still says non-current over there. So that's a very useful feature, especially if you've got those, you know, bonds and so on, things that, that you've got a portion that's current, a portion that's non-current, that kind of thing you can kind of um, go and do that switch in DraftWorks, depending on what it is in that year. So very useful um, if you do do this little blue pop-up linking. Now, one other thing that we've got in place is automatic linking. Now, automatic linking, very, very cool thing. Automatic linking, the system goes and it reads my account number names. So it reads my name over here, electricity and water. It reads insurance. It reads all of these things. And it tries to match it up with the, the names in DraftWorks. So if I use my show hide link numbers, it tries to do this process of filtering out for me. So instead of me going to say, okay, insurance, the system is going to kind of do that for me. And that's what the automatic linking is, is, is there for. So if I run it, um, I'll quickly run it and you'll see how awesome it is. And then I'll chat to you just about a few things to always keep an eye out when you do do automatic linking. But I'm going to click on that. I say, cool, yeah, he's asking me, am I sure I want to auto link? I'm just going to say yes. So I pop it open. And now what we've got is it's gone and done my linking for you, for me. And you can see there that insurance account that I was talking about, it's all automatically done. Electricity and water automatically done. A lot of these things are just kind of automated um, and, and made easy over here. So the automatic linking, very, very uh, nice to use and powerful to have. There are a few things to look out for though. And, and sometimes it's just purely that the system reads things a little bit incorrectly. So you do always need to go and double check your linking. So if we take a look here, you can see, for example, yeah, I've got depreciation linked to my motor vehicles. This is currently going to a non-current asset. Now that's an expense. Um, so what I want to do is I'm gonna just quickly go and find Put E for expenses, go and say depreciation, and go and say, okay, wait, this is my motor vehicles, depreciation, drag and drop, and it updates that link. So do double check your linking when you do do automatic linking. Um, another thing that the system sometimes really does struggle with is something like your loans to shareholders and so on. So I've got a loan to Mr. Draftworks over here. Now, because our system doesn't know who Mr. DraftWorks is, it's just taken this loan and just thrown it into a group, a loans group A. So it's kind of just a random grouping. So I need to go, I need to know um, that, that this says, okay, this is a loan to Mr. DraftWorks. Mr. DraftWorks is a shell. He's an owner in the company. So I'm going to type in owner and we've got loan to from owners. And again, I can go and pull through his loan. Another thing to note here is we've already got one owner's loan, right? So I've already used my short-term loan one for Earl's loan. So I don't want to use the same one for, for Mr. DraftWorks because I want to show them separately in my notes. So then just make sure that you use the loans to from owner the second one on the list. That's why we've got a list of 20 of them so that we can split them up nicely. At the same time, we don't want the wording to actually say loan to from owner. We actually want to say this is a loan to Earl, this is loan to Mr. Draftworks and so on. We want to specify exactly what this loan is for. And so if we want to do that, we're gonna to go to the link that we've, that we've used. So in this case, I've used the C731501 for Earl. So it's over here. I'm gonna to go to this description and I'm gonna double click on the disclosure description. And rather than saying loans to from owner, I'm gonna say loan to from Earl. And 
the system will update. And now the wording that will be used in the financials is going to be my disclosure description wording. And I can do the same with the other one. If I go down, this one is my loan to from owner non-current, which is my linking that's used for Mr. Draftworks. I can go and change my uh, wording over here again. Um, and I can just say Mr. Mr. Draftworks. And it updates and pulls it across um, for you. So a very nice uh, feature that you use. The one thing you will see also with the automatic linking is sometimes we have a case where, where it just leaves it blank. And that's in a case like this, because I've got a coffee account, very important expense for most business owners. Now, if I go through and I search coffee, we don't have anything over here. Draftworks doesn't have a coffee account. Now, the reason for that is we try and our expenses list is, is very generalized. So we're not going to do something very specific for every single type of company because then our link list is going to be 50,000 links long. So what we've done is we've got placeholder links. And those placeholder links generally just say other. So anything that says other is going to be used. So this is an other expense, but we've got other inventories. If you scroll down, we've got other assets, you know, uh, other payables, other financial liabilities. We've got everything. We've got almost every account has an other out there because there's so many different types of companies and we can't cater every single, every single specific link for that type of company. So, um, so we use other for those placeholders. So in this case, I'm looking for other expenses. So I'm going to go to the top. I'm just going to say other expenses. And I get other expenses one. And you can see we've got a list of 20. So one to 20. So you can use a whole bunch. Um, if you know, if you've got a very unique company, and they've got a whole bunch of different types of expenses, use all of these different ones. And um, we can even expand this list for you, um, I believe up to 50 if you do need it. Um, but for now, I'm going to say other expenses one, I'm going to use that for my coffee. So I'm going to link it across and there you go. Boom. Okay, cool. Uh, job's done. But it's not completely done yet because now what's going to happen is one thing that I forgot about was my description, my disclosure description. It's going to take the expense through to the financials as other expenses, which obviously just looks sloppy, especially if you're using multiple other expense items because then you've got other expenses one, other expenses five, eight, nine, 10. And the client's going to be like, what are these? Uh, this, you know, the financials are useless. I can't see what's going on over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my disclosure description. And again, we're just going to update that to say coffee and we can link across again. You can see it actually updates it and um, link description updates. And we kind of have the wording now, coffee will pull through to the financials, similar to my loans to from my share, my, my different owners that I selected. Um, so that is a very useful one to have in place. And that is pretty much the linking as a whole. We've gone through, just as a quick recap, we've gone through, we've, we've learned how to use the prefixes, how to use the categories, double clicking links across. You can multi-select to link things uh, all at once. And um, you can click on the little box here if you want to individually fix a link or something along those lines. That is the linking process that we've done now manually with the Excel import. I think from there, um, Earl, if you could quickly show the guys how the sync import works. So sync is fantastic. Um, one of the things that really makes uh, life easier and you'll see how much it speeds up this process of linking that I've just completed because it took me a bit of time. We went through, we linked things individually. Even the automatic linking took a little bit of extra time. Sync improves on all of that. Um, and I think, oh, yeah, if you can quickly yeah. no, grab the perfect. screen and, um, yeah, show the people Thanks, how Sync looks. It's really cool. Lovely. Um, so I'm just going to grab the screen. And then I think after this, shall we have a, a bit of a comfort break, Christo? And then we can jump on, onto the rest. Yeah, I think um, that, that would be good. Yeah. Awesome, cool. Okay, so just to go over Sync very quickly, what does it do? Well, Sync automates your connection with the accounting systems. So you would have noticed when we look at your working trial balance, there's a button called Sync. 
And if I click this import trial balance from sync, what it does is it's going to pop up a little window like this, and it's going to retrieve all of the companies that I've pre-linked to sync. And I'll jump in in the next few minutes and I'll show you exactly how to set that up. And then I'm also going to tell you about some other additional features that are coming. Okay, so very simply, once I have set up sync and I've connected uh, my accounting system to sync in Draftworks, I can then just simply drop down and select which entity I want to connect to. And then Sync will manage the entire connection for me. So I can go and I can select Draftworks International, select Next, it will go, it will retrieve from the accounting system, and now it presents me with uh, a few options for import. So I can automatically import my monthly balances, but right now I'm talking year-end financial statements, so I don't need the monthlies. But what I do want is I want the trial balance and I want to automatically link my accounts on import. And also there's a nice option here to do some housekeeping for me and remove empty accounts. So I hit import, it goes and I'll speak to Sync and Sync is either connected to Sage One, QBO Zero or Pastel. It's gonna import that TV and the magic happens here where it automatically links the accounts for me. I just have to take a once over and change anything that is particular for the entity. For example, members loan is linked to current. Perhaps that should be a non-current loan. I can quickly go and change the link and then jump through to my financial statements. And in a few seconds, oh, that was already open. In a few seconds, my financial statements have been updated with everything that I've just pulled in from Sync. So Sync definitely speeds it up. There is a bit of a process for the sync setup, we, we do realize that sometimes you just want to go in and import very quickly. I'm going to talk to you about that as soon as I've gone through sync very briefly. New features that we are bringing in called direct imports. Okay. So simple as that. You can actually get to a draft set of financial statements in five minutes. You create your entity. You go to your working trial balance. You import from sync. It automatically links your accounts. You can then, of course, add your priors and then import from sync again, it will import your comparatives, jump to your financial statements, and all of your figures will be here. Okay, quick and easy five minutes to draft. Of course, if the, if the TV is in a final trial balance TV format, then uh, it's going to be even quicker. So how do we set up the connection in sync very easily? If you aren't a subscriber, when you import, it'll prompt you to sign up. It's a free service. You will then jump into something called Sync. And Sync allows me to go and add in connections to add new companies. Clicking on the plus, we can then choose the accounting system that we'd want to connect to, supplier, username, password. And then as soon as the connection has completed, it will add my company in here. Okay, so this... This company is now relatable to Draftworks Cloud. And not only does it allow me to import my trial balance from the accounting systems, when you post a journal entry in Draftworks, the service will also allow you to post back the journal to the accounting system that you connect to. Okay, so it's not just an import, it's a pushback. And we think that's fantastic. Uh, the only little T's and C's to talk about is that we're still waiting for our partner key from zero. Um, so currently, if you do import from zero, you have to refresh the connection and re-authenticate. But for Sage and, and QBO and uh, Pastel Desktop, that is all automatic. So you don't have to do that, which makes life much easier. Okay, so very excited to have that. What we are bringing in as well is if you just want to do a quick import without having to go through adding a new connection in sync, you will be able to directly import from the working trial balance. Uh, next week, you'll see, for instance, Sage One will drop in, and then Zero, then QBO will just be some import options directly on your, your uh, ribbon bar. So you don't have to go through the, the setup with Sync at all. Okay, so that will just speed up for those ad hoc connections. Um, and of course, your refreshes too. That was from popular feedback that we're, we're doing that. But of course, Sync will be there too. Um, so Sync greatly improves. And also the direct feedback will also, again, 
work on the work of sync and greatly improve and speed up your imports, we'll be doing the automatic linking on the direct import as well. Okay, so that's going to speed up your entire process. We really want to work to, to having a, a basically a set of financial statements in, in 10 minutes. Of course, there's always some additional work to do, like raising tax or fixing uh, some entries that the accountant got wrong. But at the end of the day, we just want to speed up everything. All right. So to get going, um, yeah, we've covered the linking and so on on this screen. The next step essentially here that we just want to look at a few of the, the buttons we have here at the top, um, what they do and, and uh, so on. So we've seen add prior, just adds an additional year for us. Resync prior year, something that's very useful. Um, if you are working on financials over multiple years, so you've got a single client and you are doing five years of financial statements for him, and you've already, you know, you did the first year, you rolled over into the new year and started working there already, and he comes back with a change from in that first year, you can go and make the change in the first year file in DraftWorks and then come into your next year and hit resync prior. And what it's going to do, it's going to go update that prior year TB with any of the changes that you went and made in the first year. So it's a nice little um, button that can be used just to sp speed up time, especially if you've got that client who's, who's um, yeah, you know, giving you a list of 10 financials to do for 10 years or something along those lines, and he's a bit out of date, um, and he keeps coming back with changes and things that have happened. It's uh, very useful to, to yeah, just kind of make those changes uh, quick and easy. Um, the, the periods button that we have here is simply if you are doing management accounts, you can go and show monthly periods. And if I select that, you can see I've got month one, two, three, four. So it shows me each month's movement um, rather than just my opening balance transactions amounts and my final value. So um, yeah, that button there. Moving on, we can export from here to Excel. If you want to export this TV to Excel for, you know, for the auditors or for someone else to, to review, you can do that. You can also generate a PDF report of it. So just view reports. Um, we've got a little, uh, a very, very simple general ledger drill, drill down um, for your DraftWorks accounts. So that's if you're doing like a lot of journals or if you may be using our cash book you want to go see a basic uh, GL uh, drill down, you can just click on account drill down, click on the account you want, and then just drill down. And it's going to give you a little um, PDF drill down of that um, of that account, what's what's uh, moved through it in terms of the, dra the DraftWorks cash, um, cash book, as well as journals that you've done there. And then we've got consolidations. Now consolidations, obviously, if you are doing a group entity, we need to do the separate companies and then we need to do the consolidated set. So the consolidation will only really be used if we are now moving into the consolidated set. And what we do there is we click on consolidations and over here, we just click the heading and it gives me a list um, of all of the companies that are currently in my practice. So I've got a bunch of practice uh, companies here. And I would select my different companies. So let's say I've got a holding company and I've got a subsidiary. If I've got another one, you know, one or two other companies there, I would just select all of them that are part of the group. Choose the structure for that company. So this one's the holding company. This is a subsidiary and this is a subsidiary. So we just choose kind of the different things. Contribution, don't really need to worry about that for South African clients anymore. You can switch this down to 50% or whatever. And then what we can do is if you are importing uh, a TB, so let's say my, my uh, subsidiary over here, that is actually in a foreign currency. So that one is reported, let's say in Namibian dollars. So it's a completely different currency. We can go and do the foreign currency currently, sorry, foreign currency translation for you. So I just tick that on. I'm gonna then say next. And we get this foreign currency section over here where I can then go and say, okay, there's that, that uh, subsidiary. I can go and change the spot rate and the average rate, um, you know, according to, to what it would be for the year. So this is the current year. We've got the prior spot and average and then the prior two. So two years back spot and average. And you'd go and edit that. And then the system does the, the currency conversion for you. And we actually calculate your... Um, a, a basic version of your um, 
translation reserve, your foreign currency translation reserve. So it's a very useful tool to have if you are doing foreign currency trans um, consolidations. Um, you can just go and edit that there. And then when you do say next, um, you are presented with interim rates for the foreign currency as well. Um, if you want to pull an interim data and then we can say next and we would then just before we consolidate, you can include your prior data as well or leave it out. And if you are doing management accounts and you want to do a consolidation, just make sure you do click monthly management accounts so we import that correctly for you. And then you'd hit consolidate, would bring those companies TBs together and you'd have a consolidated TB on your side. Um, in terms of the delete options, I did mention earlier the, the one that, that I use the most, remove empty accounts. It just takes out any of the accounts that are empty. So that's the most useful one. The rest of them are a bit dangerous. We've got clear working trial balance. This wipes out everything. So it takes out my all of my accounts, all of my linking that I've done, all of the values, everything gets, um, gets removed. Um, so that's kind of a last resort if your TB is completely wrong and you want to import something completely fresh, um, you can kind of do that. Delete selected entry, um, self-explanatory. It's the selected entry that I've got on this side. I'm just going to delete that single one. Clear link numbers just removes the linking that we've done. Um, it keeps your accounts and your names and the values. And then zero all balances keeps my linking as well as my accounts, but it just zeroes my values. So those are a few of your delete options. Um, as I said, the one I use the most, just remove empty accounts. The rest of the stuff you don't really need to worry about much. We do have two other little buttons here. We've got a standards update and a details update. The wording should change here. This details update will soon become uh, add account, add links, um, just uh, yeah, to make it a little bit more clear. But what that does is the standard update is if you are working on a file and um, it's a file from last year. You did this file last year. Now you've rolled forward. And in the interim between the last time that you worked on this file and, and today, there's been updates in IFRS. And IFRS says we have new requirements. Financials need to change, all of that. Those standard updates are going to sit over here. Now, in this case, everything is ticked already because this file is, is up to date because I created it now a couple of hours ago. But if my file was rolled forward, that it's not going to be the latest version of our template. So then I need to go and tick my update and apply it. And it's going to pull through those IFRS updates into my financials, keep you up to date with IFRS and make sure that you are, you know, 100% compliant on your side. So a very useful little feature to have. The details update button, that's another one that's very nice to have. What we often see is, and uh, let me pop open the link numbers to just show this to you. So I've gone to my show hide link numbers again. If I look at my bank accounts, so bank balances, right? In DraftWorks, currently we only have five for this company. Now, oftentimes you've got a bigger corporate, something like that. They've got a bunch of bank accounts. So they've got 10 bank accounts or something along those lines. Now you sit in a bit of a conundrum because you want to show each bank account separately, but there's only five in DraftWorks. So now what do I do? I can go to my details update. So as I said, this is going to be changed to add linking or add links. And um, if I click on that, I can actually go and tell the system, I want to add link numbers, additional link numbers. And it's actually going to automatically add them through. It adds them into the link numbers over here. And it also adds them on the financial statements for me. So it updates everything for you. It's a very, very useful tool. And again, it's something that's actually relatively not super new in, in cloud. Um, but on cloud side, we only brought it in this year, but it's also something a lot of people requested. And um, yeah, we've just tried to make it uh, as easy as possible for you to add those extra links. So what I would do here is if I want to add those extra bank balances, um, I can use my same filter bar. So we've got that same filter bar um, that's orange that we've got all over the rest of the file. I can filter for bank. And there you can say, see, it says increase bank accounts from five to 25. So I'm going to use that one. I just tick it over here and say apply. It's going to give me a little bit of a warning. It's going to tell me it's going to update the financials. Please make sure all of those kind of things. I'm happy with that. Just say OK. And this goes through and it now does this update for me. And it, it updates, as I said, it's going to update my linking. It's going to add those additional links. 
and it's also going to go and update my financial. So now all I do, just click on that again, just kind of refresh it, click on it once away and then bring it back. And now if I go and find my bank balances, you can see I've got up to 25. So that's really useful. Um, and now I can link 25 and my notes is updated. The whole financials is ready set for 25 bank balances. So a useful one um, that we've added in. Back in the past, you had to send the file into our team and they had to do it and it just took a lot longer. This is another feature that's just on the plus financials. So those guys of you that's on legacy, um, you're missing out. Plus features are, are really cool. So it's some nice things that we have. Um, yeah, that is the working trial balance, pretty much summed up. I think uh, moving on, we can quickly take a look at doing a journal. And then after that, we're going to go and um, hop onto our financials. So let's go to look at a journal quickly. So I'm going to go financial data and I'm going to go to journal entries. You'll see we do have journal entries legacy. Again, we've been updating and we're continuously updating. So legacy is our older journal entry screen. It's still there. It still works. Um, we're hoping most of you have moved over to the normal journal entry screen. We made quite a few changes there and quite a few improvements, um, especially speed wise. So if I do go and pop that open, um, you'll see the screen is split in two. The old one, we just had like a single grid. Um, it was a little bit more complicated to use, a little bit less user friendly. And um, it also was a little bit slower. So we did catch some lags, especially when the guys had a lot of journals, we saw it was not uh, up to scratch in terms of speed. So that's why we built the new journal entry screen. If you guys are using it, please let us know if you're happy with it, if there's anything you'd like to see here. But with the journal entry screen, we've got this little green bar over here. And again, that's where we create a new account, a new journal, a new director, anything new on the screen that we're working with. That's what this green bar is about. So I'm gonna go create a new journal. So I can choose my adjustment type firstly. So it's a normal adjusting journal. That's for your standard adjustments that you want to pull through to the, you know, um, back to your, your accounting packages where you're doing the, the journals, I mean, where you're doing your processing. The drafting is if you're doing a journal essentially just for the financial sake. Overs and unders for your audits reviews, you're gonna be doing journals there, not recorded. If you're doing a journal, let's say you're doing a big journal, it's got a big impact on the file. You still want to go and review it with your partner or with a client. And you want to, want to see what it does to the financials. You want to flip it on and off. You can just switch it to not recorded and that does not affect your financials, but it does keep your journal there kind of safe. So if you do want to switch it on, just switch it over. Then we've got a standing journal. A standing journal is the best. Standing journal is actually, if you've got a journal that you're going to do every year, so either if you're doing a group company, so you need to do elimination journals, or if you are doing, um, maybe you're doing company and you know they never do their depreciation and you're always going to do their depreciation for them. Make it a standing journal. Very, very useful because next year, what happens is with the standing journals, when we roll forward, we keep those journals in place for you. And again, it's another thing that we've put in place to just speed up the process for you. So you don't need to go recreate the journal. It's already there. You just update the amounts with your new depreciation figures or your new elimination figures and so on. The last two that we have, interim and budget, that is if you want to do journals to your interim and budget amounts that's been imported. Now I'm going to do a normal adjusting journal and you can give it a description. So I'm just going to say new journal. Do be more descriptive than me. I just say new journal. You can say what it's actually about, depreciation, fixing this, fixing that. And then I give it a little reference. Now the reference is important for your sync exports. So Earl did mention earlier with sync, we can export journals back to our accounting packages, but they do require a reference. It's one of the things we, we need to complete because the, the accounting packages require a reference um, before they can kind of automate the journal. So it is something you, you do want to enter there if you're using sync. Now I've hit enter and it created my journal. You can see it's popped open a new, new journal here at the bottom. And now I can go and on the, uh, on the right hand side, I can go and choose the accounts that need to be part of this journal. So I can click on this drop down, scroll through, select the different ones, or simply type in what you're looking for. So let's say I want to do a little journal to one of the loan accounts. I'm going to just type in loan. 
it filters out um, essentially the, the specific accounts and I can go find one there. And then I just fill in my amount. So amount that I can use this side is if it is positive, it's a debit. If it's negative, it's going to be a credit. Now, obviously, my journal needs to balance. I can't have an unbalanced journal. You can see the system's giving me a warning there. It says out of balance. We also have a 500 here at the bottom. So the system is kind of telling me I'm out with 500. This journal needs to be balanced. And so now what I need to go and do is I need to go and just in my account of here, just select the other account, you know, whichever account it is. If you've got a really long list on your TB over here, what you can do is click on this little blue um, select account. And what that's going to do, it's going to bring up a little screen with just my trial balance where I can just select an item, double click, and you can see it selects my uh, account for me. So that's if you kind of have a big one that you can't use this filter for, you can just use the blue button, opens up a big screen for your, for your TV. And then this time I'm going to put in negative. So negative is a credit. So now my journal balances. You can see I've got a green tick mark over there and the system is happy. Now, one thing you guys will notice on this journal screen is that this line and these two lines that I've created, they've stayed green. Now, it is something that we're trying that that we we indicate the, the, the green is essentially saying this has not been saved to the server just yet. So we need to save this to the server. Um, so we do have this little button over here. So if I click save, you can see these screens go white. And all that that indicates is that this has now pushed this um, back to our servers and this, this journal has been saved. Um, it is one of the new features with this journal screen. The reason it's there is just to speed up the process um, and, and make the journal screen smoother. But that does mean we need to change how the saving works. Now, don't worry about losing data. We have put in place, if I go and say, let's just do another new journal, so new journal two, and I create it. If I have not saved it and I jump back to my working trial balance and um, I'm like, oh, flip, you know, I didn't save that. We do save it automatically for you. You can see it's gone white. The journal is still there. So we're going to save it automatically for you. The only time, pretty much the only time at the moment, we've, we had a few problems earlier, but we fixed everything that um, that it might not save is if like load shedding strikes and your computer goes off before you've done the save there. Um, then you might hit a problem with the journals, but otherwise they save automatically now when you navigate around in DraftWorks. We fire the save as soon as you change anything. Um, a few other things with the journals, we can also go and um, copy a journal. So very useful, again, if you've got a, a journal that's the same um, year on year. So if it's, you know, if I'm having the same journal this year and the prior year, I can go and copy this journal to the following or the prior tax year. And then the same with the move. If you've got a journal, but for some reason you accidentally created it in the wrong year, you can move the whole journal into one of the other years. And it's kind of going to go and um, just shift that whole journal across for you. So if I use copy, I mean, that's a nice one. Copy to the prior tax year. You can see, there you go, in my 2021 year, I get this journal. And in my 2020 year, the journal still stays there. So very nice to kind of copy and move around your journals. The export buttons, Earl did mention, we can export to sync. Very cool feature. I love that, that we can just push back your journals automatically to your client. You don't need to worry about them not doing journals and you having retained earnings issues or anything like that. Uh, we can export to Excel as well, if you want to, just the Excel version of that. We can import that same Excel. So you'll see we've got an Excel layout. We can import that. And then we've got a few delete options similar to our, our um, you know, working trial balance. We can clear everything so that wipes out everything. Delete selected and then clear journal entry amounts. That only clears my amounts. It doesn't, it leaves my journal intact. So, um, I mean, I can go and delete this empty journal if I want. Just delete it quick and easy. We can view a report and that's just a PDF report of all of our journals. So that's the journals entry screen. You'll see if we do just quickly hop back to the working TV, 
in the adjustments column, you're going to see that 500 and that comes through from my journal screen. So that 500 is essentially just the amount that um, that's affecting our final balance and the final balance is what goes through to my financials. Now going on from there, we do want to go and pop in and look at the financials. Now, one thing to note with the, with the, before I open the financials, if your TB is out of balance, the system's not gonna allow you to go and um, open your financials. So let's just, I mean, do an example here. If I go and purposefully break my TB, you can see at the bottom, we indicate to you, you're out with 500 Rand. If I try and pop this open, go into my financials, the system is going to tell me, nope, can't open the financials without a balanced TB. The main reason there is we just want to save you time because if you open the financials with an unbalanced TB, you will have obviously errors on the financials. And rather than being like, oh, why is my financials wrong? We stop you here and just try and assist you immediately to make sure that everything is uh, in place and correct. So now I've corrected that. Let's pop back into the financials. We're going to go to our financials here. And it takes a moment or two to open the financials. This is where we've made one of our biggest improvements and it's really, really exciting. Um, and we've, we've actually um, mentioned it in our notification just the other day, and that is the new fire sheet. Now fire sheets is essentially this system that we work on when we work on the financials themselves. You'll see it looks very similar to Excel. Um, it's something that we've designed completely on our side with some of the smartest people that we know um, honestly, our dev team is just insane. And um, we, we've we built this thing and the initial version was good enough like to, to I, I guess, be like a passing version of it. And um, then we decided to bring in the new file sheet. And this is just sped everything up. So we've sped up the opening time of the files. We sped up the calculations. We sped up if you copy paste data from different programs from a pass from a PDF from Excel whatever we've we've improved the way that we handle things there um, all those kind of things so we've really really tried to improve a lot with our new version of the financials um, or new version of fire sheets this you'll see if you if you in the next month we pretty much want to switch everyone over um, so this we're, we're switching just gradually we're pushing a few a few black like, a few hundred a day at the moment. And then hopefully by the end of this month, um, we're going to have everyone over. So that's going to be hopefully improve all of all of um, your experiences with the system. Um, it should improve the load times dr quite dramatically. And um, yeah, it's, it's one of the things that we're super excited that we finally got out. And um, it's also one of the big things that's going to give us the ability to bring in our audit um, that we're looking for in future, like I mentioned. So bring in those audit working papers and all of that. Now on the financials itself, Draftworks, the, the, how we built the templates and how we built the program is we try and do as much as possible for you without you lifting a finger. As soon as you open up this financial, we've already gone and we've opened up the relevant notes for you. So if I go to my note sheet, you'll see my PPE notes already open. If I scroll down, my inventory's note is open. So Draftworks has already gone and it's detected there are certain amounts in your, in, your, um, in your TB. And because those amounts are in the TB, we've gone and popped open the, the, the notes for you and actually also the accounting policies. So you can see my PPE accounting policy is also open. So we've tried to speed up the process for you a lot. Now, that being said, we always do need to polish up our financials, make sure everything is compliant, everything looks good. So what we can do on our side is we hop through the different sheets at the bottom here. I can click on the sheet, takes me through to that sheet. Then I can scroll through and, and start working on my file. We've got a few extra tools to also assist you and, and, and make it faster for you to find what you're looking for, to make sure that your disclosure is correct and to make sure everything is balanced balanced um, on your side at the end of the day. Now, that's what we have here at the bottom, this checklist and status. Now, the checklist sheet, really, really cool. This is here to help you essentially navigate our financials and make sure you're disclosing everything. Because in our file, we've got all of the different types of disclosures that you can kind of 
um, think of almost. So now what I'm going to do, let's say I'm having a rough day and I cannot remember for the life of me how to disclose inventories. So I'm, I'm like, Yo, yes, guys, you know, it's just a rough day. How do I disclose inventories? What does IFRS SME say about inventories? I go to the heading over here. The reason I can tell that this is a heading um, is because it's got this little box next to it. So anything with a box next to it is a heading and it's got content underneath of it. So if I want to expand that heading, expand all the content underneath it, click on the plus, and you can see we've opened up as all the sections for the IFRA SME standards. And now we've got section one, two, three, four, all the way down there. And these are all the actual sections from IFRS for SMEs. And I can go to section 13 for inventories because I can't remember how to do inventories. I'm going to again click on the little plus because it's a heading. And here's the disclosure. This is the actual wording from IFRS. And it says, this is what an entity shall disclose, A, B, C, D, E. For IFRS SMEs, this is what we need to make sure everything is disclosed. So this solves the first problem that I have. I couldn't remember what inventories need, what I need to disclose when I've got inventories in a company. And now I can read through these and I can be like, cool, accounting policies. I need to do this, this, and this. If I then want to go and check, okay, cool. So I need to have an accounting policy around, uh, around my inventories. Draftworks are, obviously has that accounting policy in place already. Our template has that, but you don't know where to find it. Uh, and you often find that with the notes as well. We've got a lot of different notes. So where do you find that actual note? And that's what these blue little hyperlinks are for. These blue hyperlinks I can use to hop directly to the, the location where this disclosure is fulfilled in the draft books financial statements. So I'm going to click on that. And boom, there you go. It's taken me through to my inventories accounting policy. So you can see at the bottom on, on the accounting policy sheet, and this is my little inventories note um, on our accounting policy that I can go and make sure is correct, or I can type in my own thing, all of that. Similarly, I can hop to the notes and be like, oh, cool, there's the inventories note. And it says inventories comprises of blah, blah, blah. It's got all of my details there. So really, really cool. Um, and I love this feature. If you don't know where to find something, use it. Um, a lot of clients are like, I'm not sure where to find something. Come to this sheet. Even if you don't know where to find it here, use Control F, Control F on your keyboard, find and say uh, inventories. And you can just say find or find all. And then it gives me, oh, there it is. And it takes me there. Then I can kind of be like, oh, cool. Okay, that's where I go and find my inventories. So some cool features here. I really, really like the um, checklist sheet. It helps a lot of clients. Um, it also has South African legislative requirements, uh, Companies Act, as well as Sectional Titles Act. If you've got a CC, it will be the, the Closed Corporation Act, all of that kind of thing. So we've really tried to make it as easy as possible for you to, to navigate the file. Status sheet. Status sheet is there essentially to try and help you balance your financials. So we want to make sure that when you end up giving this to your client, you essentially give something to the client that is balanced and perfectly you know, looking good. So I've got a few issues here. You can see I've got my PPE is out of balance. Now that's the one you'll probably see most common because if there was a purchase of an asset, a disposal of an asset, something like that, you will have to go and complete that recon. It's part of doing financial statements. So it's kind of in place there for you. Now, the other things I've got here, I've got a few other things, retained earnings, that's a big one. That's something that is not always great. And that's something that Sync really helps with because usually what happens is when I've got retained earnings out of balance, it's because I did journals last year in my draft works and I did those journals and I sent it through to my client and my client just didn't put it into his accounting system. Then he rolled forward and he kept going. And now this year he gives me his new trial balance, but his new trial balance had the incorrect opening balances because he didn't, he didn't go and process the journals I gave him last year. And so we sit with the retained earnings error. If you do see this, Go and double check that. Make sure that your closing balances match the opening balances of this year from Draftworks. And um, yeah, 
then you should be able to fix it like that. It is one of the things we see the most on support. And it's also one of the things we unfortunately can't help with on support because um, it is it is based on the, usually in the TB that the problem sits. And then the last thing I also have out of balance is cash flow. Now, the one thing I always tell, tell people is look at your cash flow last. Don't even start looking at it if your PPE isn't balanced or your retained earnings is out or something like that. Because these all affect on all of these recons, in fact, if I go all the way down to there, like pretty much all of these recons are going to affect your cash flow. Um, because if I do a purchase of an asset, that's a cash flow that needs to update. And so if I change this, it, it will update eventually there. So yeah, recons, very important to do first. Cash flow, do it last. And um, yeah, go from there. To maybe just explain how the recon works. And I do like to just go over this as a basic. We usually go here and I can go and say, again, we've got a blue hyperlink. So it jumps to my note. So let's go take a look at that PPE, PPE note. And we've got the note here and we've got our reconciliation here. Now we can go and take a look and we've got opening balances here. So here's my recon for the 2022. I've got my opening balances. I've got my movements for the year and the system calculates a final balance. So if we look at, if you have the basics, we see, okay, my carrying amount was 24. I had some depreciation and then my balance is 9,000 but we've got a difference. And that difference is because the system says, okay, but look at what the value is from the trial balance. So that's what this value is. So our TB value. Now the trial balance value says it should be 6,000, but my calculated value is 9,000. So now I need to make my calculated value and my TB value match up. And that's one of the most important things we see it very, very often popping in. Guys aren't sure how to do this. And it's very, very simple. We've got all of these blue cells over here. And this is all part of our movements for the current year. And DraftWorks can't pick up if there was a purchase, right? So maybe there was an acquisition during the year or a disposal. But DraftWorks doesn't know. Maybe it was a disposal or it was a revaluation or an impairment or something like that. We don't know what it was. Um, and that's where you come in. You need to go and say, look at your asset register, go through and be like, okay, cool. You know what? there was a disposal in my machinery. And I go and type that in. So disposal is negative, type that in, and you can see my, my um, value for my PPE is now updated and it now matches up that value that we had from the trial balance. The calculation now matches the TB value and we've got no more difference. And we can do the same then with the motor vehicles. You go through the same process for every asset class and you go through, okay, cool. Maybe this one was just a purchase. Um, so I just go and type in 134047. Type that in. And again, this one also balances. And now if we go back to our status sheet, the current year is now in balance. So very cool. Um, and, and, and we know now that that's correct. We don't need to worry about our PPE recon anymore. It's gone and been updated and it's 100%. So that is one of the... Um, big things on using the status and the checklist. Very, very useful, those two sheets. Um, they're there to kind of yeah, help you along and make sure you don't give financials that are incorrect to your clients. The rest of the sheets that we have here are very standardized. So we've got our cover letter, you know, index, management info, responsibilities, director's report, all of these different reports and so on. Now, there's, there's two things that you'll see. The first is We've got an audit report, a review report, and a compilation report, an accounting office report, and a psycho report. We've got all the reports in the world. We don't want all the reports. We want one, maybe two, if you're doing a compilation audit kind of thing. So how do I get rid of sheets at the bottom here that I don't want? It's really simple. All that we're going to do is at the top here on our ribbon bar at the top, we're going to go to content. And under content, you can see we've got this list over here. And this is all of our sheets. All of the different worksheets that are listed at the bottom are the ones listed at the top here. And all the ones that are dark, highlighted in dark are currently active. So if I want to deactivate a report, so let's say I want to deactivate my review report. So I've got my review report over here. 
I want to get rid of it because I'm not doing a review. I'm doing compilation. I'm going to click there, click on it once, remove my review report. I now only sit with my audit and compilation. It's gone. And so I can do the same with the audit, get rid of that. Now we only have compilation. Take away officer, take away the cycle report, status and checklist. I don't want my client to see those. So I'm going to take them away. And we kind of sit now just with what's actually needed. We can go along the side here. If you want to take away the ratios, the tax calc, maybe you're doing a management pack or something like that, take away your accounting policies, cash flow, all those kind of things. So it's very flexible in terms of what you can turn off and on. If, I'm, if I do want my audit report back, just click on it again. And there you go, it's back. So very, very easy to kind of go and make that adjustment on your side. So one thing that we also see, and I like to show the director's report here. So we've got the director's report and um, we scroll through this and let's take a look at this going concern. Now, if I look at the going concern, we have got quite a bit of information here. All of this, all of this that I've highlighted now is part of my going concern. Now, if you have a very long going concern like that, then good luck to you. But most of the time you want a paragraph or two. You're not gonna have 10, 20 paragraphs for something like going concern. So what, what's going on? Why is DraftWorks showing me all of this extra data? And essentially what we have in place here is DraftWorks only shows you, it's, we're only going to print essentially the, the, the rows that don't have these blue hash lines going across them at the back. So if you take a look at this going concern section, this paragraph is going to print and this paragraph is going to print. This paragraph, this paragraph, this, they're all not going to print because they've got these blue lines going across them. Same with this one. It's not going to print. Now, that is, again, we've set up the defaults here already for you. So we've automatically said these are, you know, not supposed to print. Uh, only these two are, are supposed to print. So what, what do we do? How do we control that? From my side as an accountant, I'm like, okay, no, but maybe this paragraph isn't correct for my client. Maybe this paragraph is correct for my client. So the, the, the way that I control that, I'm gonna to go to this little gray column on the side here. And in the gray column, you can just type in a zero. And you can see as soon as I do that, the zero basically deactivates this row from printing. So now this row will no longer print. And I can go and say, cool, let's activate this one. This was the row that I wanted to print. So I'm gonna go here and rather than typing in a zero, we go to that same gray column and I'm gonna type in a one. And you can see it loses those blue lines going across. And that means this is now the active paragraph. This is what's going to be printing on my financials. So I can similarly just take out this and take all the different things out. And um, it kind of goes through and, and I can pick and choose what I want to show and hide. And you can see, we've got a lot of examples for you. We've got about what, there's about 10 paragraphs here. So we, we try and cater for a whole bunch of different types of instances and, and paragraphs and so on. If you still want to add your own details, so now I wanna go and say, you know what, I've read through each and every one of these paragraphs and going concern, not one of them are correct for my client. What am I gonna do then? The easiest thing to do, insert some of your own rows and edit your own rows and go and make those adjustments yourself. Um, so really simple to do that. We go to format and We've got this insert row button. I'm gonna click on that. I'm gonna say, I want to insert two rows and I'm just gonna click insert. And the system goes, it pops open two rows for me and I can go and type in whatever I want into that row. So very, very easy to customize the financials to match up for what you want. Insert some rows, type in your own content if you don't want any of the paragraphs that we've got in place for you. So that's one of the very cool and easy, easy ways to use DraftWorks. And, and yeah, I guess what, what makes it so attractive, it's so customizable um, on our side. One of the cool things we are also looking at just for future, I'm quickly gonna pop it on. It just relates with hiding and showing rows is we are going to be changing it to look something like this. 
where instead of typing in a zero and a one in this column, you simply click on the little dot and it's gonna go and overwrite that and make it a one automatically for you. Just speeds up that process. We don't need to go and type in anything. We simply need to click on the dot over here. So that's one of the cool new features we're gonna bring in soon. Um, yeah, like to show it off. It's one of the nice things. The moment you will see it like this though, and we'll probably add that in in the future. So that's how I've gone and edited um, in my financials. I've gone and customized my director's report. I've gone and chosen different paragraphs to use. I've hidden some paragraphs and so on. The showing and hiding of content. Again, we do this for you in most of the places. So if I go to my statement of financial position, you can see like a lot of this, it's, it's um, not showing, right? It's, it's gonna hide these automatically. And the system simply does it automatically because it sees there's a value in here and therefore it's activated this, whereas these are all deactivated. They've got the little blue lines, so they are not gonna um, print. So one of the nice things, we kind of do it most of the places for you. The only places you'll probably go and use that show hide number is in your reports and maybe your accounting policies and some on the notes. Speaking of the notes, if we do work through the file, right? And generally what I would go and do my side, I go and through my statement of financial position and look at every statement of the of financial position item, any line item that's got a value in and go and take a look at the note. We've got those blue hyperlinks again. We can look at the note simply by clicking on that and it pulls us through to here. So now we've gone and we've gone to our inventories note. So the inventories note, we've already opened the default for you. The one thing you do need to double check on your side is you do need to make sure any additional disclosure that's required that might be part of the note, you do need to go and add in yourself. So what am I talking about? Like let's use inventories as a nice example. So sometimes with inventories, and uh, let's say you take out a loan from a company and they're like, no, no, we want security on that loan. We want your inventory, part of your stock is gonna be security. So if you can't pay it off, we get your stock. So that's something that needs to be declared on the financials, right? We can't not talk about that. It's, it's a big influence on the liquidity of the company and all of that. So now we're gonna look here and we're gonna say, okay, cool. So inventory is comprises of, that's the basic, the base level of in inventory. And we've got that in there. But if I scroll down a bit, you can see we've got these three, uh, three headings and they are all part of the inventories note. And the one year says carrying amount of inventory pledged as security. So I can go and pop that section open, but that is something that I need to do on my side because there's no way for DraftWorks to know that certain inventory is pledged as security. So it's something that's essentially what we call off trial balance items. It's things that you need to just be aware of on your side. Um, and you need to make sure that you go and complete that on the financials to be in line with, um, you know, with the disclosure standards and so on. So that's an important one I do always like to show. If we do continue going on here, so we've looked through the, the SOFP, you can see all the values pull through here. If we go statement of comprehensive income, very similar, we add you know, all of your different sections together and, and just do a summary there with the note links again. Same with the statement of changes in equity, it's layout's just a little bit different. We've got different things over here on the side and then your, your dates are, are, are running um, your, uh, horizontally or vertically. We've got the start of the year, the movements during the year and the end of the year. And then we've got the current year, start of the year, movements during the year and end of the year. So that is your statement of changes in equity. The cash flow. this is where I mentioned earlier. So because I only have two years working trial balance, you will see that if I look at my 2021 cash flow, a lot of these cells are dark blue. And what the dark blue essentially means in DraftWorks is that you need to go and possibly edit this value um, because it's something that we cannot automate. Um, so you would have seen that on the, on the PPE note, like if we hop back to that PPE note, all of these movements, the acquisitions, the disposals, all of that 
are dark blue cells because we are telling you this needs to be corrected by you as the accountant on your side. Same with the cash flow. Because I only have two years in my cash flow, I'm going to have to manually type in all of those things. If we have three years, the system's automatically going to pick that up and I won't have blue cells here. I'm going to have my formulas in there and it's going to automatically pull through all of the data. The one nice thing on the on the, the, the cash flow just to take note of is we've got these yellow cells on the side here. And they are cells that are there essentially for rounding purposes. So if you scroll through and your, your cash flow is out with a rand or something along those lines or two rand, three rand, then you can go through and use these little rounding buttons or rounding cells. And you can see, uh, okay, so let's let's use this as an example. So I've got my adjustments um, uh, in other operating payables. So it's currently 3,060. If I want to change it, I'm going to type in one. I want to do some rounding. You can see that changes to 3,061. So it's just a nice little feature that we've got in place so that you can clean up your rounding if there's like a rand here or rand there and something's out of balance, especially your cash flow, because that's usually where those floating rounding rands go and sit. You can just fix it up with your, um, your yellow columns over here. And why can't I go and edit the formula? Well, you can try. You'll see if I go to my formula over here for you, it's got a big formula at the top here. And if I pop it open, you can see it's a massive formula. So you can go try and edit that formula but you might run into some problems because it's a very complicated formula. But the first thing you'll see is I can't even type into it. So if I try, nothing happens. It doesn't get edited at all. And that's because we've locked this formula down. We've kind of gone through and we want to make sure that you can't just willingly edit everything because you're going to maybe force balance something you shouldn't, or, you know, sometimes people go through and, and, um, yeah, they, they go and break a formula accidentally. And next year when you roll forward, it's just a headache for everyone that needs to look at that file again. Because if your formula is broken in the current year and you roll forward, that formula is going to be broken in next year. So that's why we don't want you to go and edit the formula. We've given you these little cells to go and do that. That being said, if you do have to go and edit the formula, as a manager and as a partner, you are able to do that. So if you go to the design over here at the top on your ribbon bar and you go to unlock formulas, you click on that. And now you can see, if I pop open the formula again, it doesn't have that gray background anymore. And I can go and be sneaky and type something in there and it actually updates. So you can go do that. It's not advised um, to, be, to be very honest. We don't advise you editing the formulas, especially the figures. Um, you can go and edit, you know, more lenient, more leniently the, the naming because naming is just naming. Um, but your figures, you you don't want to go and mess around with that. You're going to cause headaches for the guys in the next year. So yeah, that is kind of how I can go and edit something on my side. We move on to the accounting policies. Accounting policies, again, we've gone and opened up as much as we can for you. We had a quick look at this earlier. And um, we can we can go through and look at the different accounting policies. You can make changes. So if we look at the PPE, we can go and say, oh, you know, what's the useful life or the depreciation rate? It's five years or, you know, all those different things we can type in and go and make changes here as we want. Again, you can go and insert rows uh, under format, insert row, insert some rows if you want, and then just type in if you're not happy with the paragraphs we've got. If we hop down through to the notes then, the notes, we've gone through the PPE note. We've got a few different ones. We've gone through the inventory. We've got all these different notes, right? So your notes are, are where a lot of the work gets done, especially customization work. Now, when you do look at it, for example, we've got a loan to shareholder year. Now, something that I need to bring in again as the accountant to make sure that these financials are in balance and correct, I need to go talk about the terms of this loan. I've got a loan to Mr. Draftworks, um, or he he uh, owes us a thousand rand. What's the repayment terms on that loan? And that's again why we've given you this blue little cell over here. I can go through and type in my um, 
any of my customization that I want in this blue cell over here. And the system's gonna go and add that through. And uh, we, we see that on the print. So do make sure you complete the notes um, nicely. Cash and cash equivalents, we've got the basics over here. You can go and look at the additional things. Um, you know, there's the total of the net cash um, and cash equivalents. We've got the details of the bank balances. We've got a whole bunch of info. And here you can see, remember earlier, I added those extra links, those 25 bank accounts. You can see the system has automatically brought those 25 links into the, uh, the notes over here. If we do scroll down a little bit further, let's say we want to add our own note. We've, there's something here that we need to report on and DraftWorks just hasn't like um, got it at all. That's where we go through and we've got these additional notes for you. And they are completely blank and editable. So I can go through here and add in my own amounts. Amount one, amount two, and a total. And what I can go and do is I can put in formulas into these cells actually. So let's say I've got an amount one and that's 10 and this is 25 and I wanna see what my total is. There's a little auto sum, click there. You can see the system brings in that sum formula for you, 35. It's, it's nice and, and, and easy to use. We can also go and format these cells then. So this is where that shines, where we as accountants are so used to Excel and we're, you know, all of us kind of work in Excel. So, or have worked in Excel. If you're used to that, DraftWorks is easy to adjust to because it works very similarly to Excel. I can go through, I can add some borders here, you know, uh, top bottom border. I can go format this. So if you want to make sure everything's formatted in our standard format, we're gonna go to the DraftWorks format and just make sure everything is, sits nicely um, and, and all of the data is there. So I can go type in values. I can also bring in formulas to pull in the data correctly as I want it. So let's say I want to pull in a certain amount from one of my uh, items in my, my uh, working trial balance. If I want to bring in, let's say this cleaning amount. So there's cleaning. We want to see what this, uh, you know, that amount, but we also want to automate it. So what we want is next year when I roll forward, it needs to bring in the new balance. Um, on our side. And the way that I do that is I go to design and we've got these little buttons at the top here, trial balance values, link number values. And essentially the trial balance values is if we want to bring in a balance directly from a, a, an amount in my TB. So let's go and say, I want the final balance. So the final balance is this column final. And I wanna click on that. And I want it for, we said this cleaning account. I tick that and I can say select. And there you go, it's brought it in. It's brought it in with a formula that's automated and that formula will roll forward next year. So it's gonna automatically um, go through and kind of pull through that data. So it's very, very cool to, to be able to just kind of build formulas with the click of a button over here. We can also do the same for link numbers. So if you want to bring through like a prior link numbers, if we want to bring through the prior values for my accounts, I want to go through and use that. So let's say we're gonna say, again, for cleaning, we're gonna select that and you can see it pulls through now a formula. Now this formula looks a little bit different um, and we've kind of got that in place um, for you. Just wanna pop open and make that formatting nice. So we've got that there. I do want to run through just the basics of understanding DraftWorks formulas. This will help you a lot if you are not sure where to link something. So what I do often see is we've got a client and he says, I need to link some or other value to you know this line in my financials. Okay, so you end up with that. You're not sure how to get your value there. You know for a fact it needs to be here but how do I even get it here? So let's use this, this um, amount as an example. So we're gonna say this needs to be cleaning. Now, if I don't know what, what link to use, right? Then I look at the formula and the main part you need to worry about is essentially this part that's in green. 
that says E.330.000. And all that the system is essentially saying, it's got a sum if formula. So it says, add these values together if the link number is E330.000 and the prior one means it's from my prior year, not my current year. So if I go back to my TB and I read my linking, you can see the linking for that cleaning account is E.330.000 and it's my prior year value. 19,000. So, so that's how to read the linking. So you'll often see that if you go to the statement of financial position, you can see almost all of these items are those sum if accounts. Um, and they've got this green section in. It really helps you to find them just to like, okay, cool. I found what I'm looking for. You'll oftentimes see little question marks in the formula. So if you look at the inventories over here, we've got the CA.6 and then just question marks. Now, essentially, what that means is the question marks are, um, are, are, can be wild cards. They can be anything on our site. So if I go to my linking again, and I want to look at what's going to be included there, I can say C8.6, and anything after that is going to be included in the, in the, the um, inventories over here. So it's kind of a nice way to, to go and add everything together over there. So with the, that, that's just a nice way to understand our, our linking as a whole and, and follow everything along and so on. I think that's pretty much everything on the financials. Moving on from there, um, we do want to go take a quick look at the print preview. So with the print preview, what that essentially does is the print preview is going to take all of this, uh, this whole thing and turn it into a PDF. So the way that I get there, I'm going to make sure I'm on format on my financials, and then I'm going to say preview. And it gives me a nice preview. It takes a second or two. It goes and turns this document, um, my Excel-like document, into a PDF, um, pretty much. And this is what I'm left with. Now I've got my PDF over here, places I can scroll through. I've got everything um, looking good. I can hop through to different places on the side here. So I can go look at my statement of financial position. Just click on that. Takes me directly there. If I want to go take a look at my different notes, click there. Takes me directly there. So that's how we now navigate this PDF. I can scroll through it. Everything looks good. If there's, a, if there's an issue, something doesn't look right, go back into the financials, go and change it, go and fix it, and just hit the preview button again. It regenerates the preview for you with the adjustments with the new financials on your side. In terms of options that we have for this on this right-hand side, uh, we do have a few basic options. We can add watermarks. So you can just tick this on. It adds a watermark to my file. Once I've ticked it on, I click apply. The system goes and rebuilds the PDF now with my new settings enabled. So you can see it now says draft. So that watermark has been added. We can also go through and change the margins. I can change my top margins, my side margins, all that kind of thing. If you're, you know, um, maybe binding these financials or something like that. And a very important one that we do have in place is this sheets import. Now, what this means is we can actually attach PDFs. So your own PDF that you have from somewhere, and we can pull it into this draft work set of financials. Now, if we do come through and let's say we take a look at the auditor's report. Now I've typed up, my, this, is, this is the DraftWorks default one. But if I've gone through and my auditor, he's gone and, you know, he's gone and typed up his whole big audit report that he wants to put in, in place of this one. And I want to make it part of the DraftWorks financials. We've got a way to do that. And that's what this, this um, attached PDF files to the sheets is. First thing we need to do is bring that report up into DraftWorks. And I'm gonna do that using the file manager. So at the top here, you'll see file manager. I click on that. You'll see these headings match our headings at the top here. I can then go and say, uh, let's go into documents. I want to bring in my new uh, audit report. So I'm going to say upload file, click on that, select that file, go through the system. I say, there's my custom audit report. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to bring it in. 
So upload, and you can see it brings it in a little star next to it that it's new. And I can just say, okay, cool. And now my audit report is here. Now I want to make it part of this financials, okay? And the way that I do that is on my section over here on the right, I'm gonna to go to my report audit. I'm gonna click on this little paper clip and I can say, do I want to attach the file above, below or replace it completely? So in this case, I wanna replace it completely and I want to find that document. So it's under documents and I've got my custom audit report. I click on that. You can see it now strikes a line through it, gives me that, I can say apply. And what we then get is, if we could take a look, there you go. I've got my super fantastic audit report from my auditor, completely custom as part of the DraftWorks financials. So it's very, very useful to have, if you've got an auditor that's busy using, you know, sending you his report in PDF and you just want to put it in there. And um, also very nice if you want to, you know, include the signed financials or the signed documents um, into um, your final uh, file. Going to the side here, we've got cover page. So we can go and insert a cover image if we want one. Um, we can uh, bring that into the file. Simply click on that, click there to create cover image. And we've got one of two options. Either we can just bring in the image here. So if I do that, it takes me straight to my little browser screen and I can bring in my image, apply that. And you can see it's going to probably look a little bit horrible because I have my settings wrong. It says position is full screen. I need to change this to where I want it. Do I want it the middle center and apply? Then it's going to put it in the middle of my sheet. So just make sure you do go and make me correct that on your side. And you can see it looks nice now in the middle there. We can do the same with letterheads. If I want to add a letterhead to my compiler's report, I'm going to go here. I'm going to add a letterhead. You can see it says letterhead one. I've got space for up to 20 letterheads. Um, I can do the same as before. I can just bring the image in here. Or if I don't have a nice A4 scaled letterhead, click on this need a new letterhead, create your own year. It gives you this blank A4 um, page where I can then click on this image, again, go and find my image. And it pops my image on a blank A4 where I can now resize it. So I can make it a whole lot bigger put it at the top there, or put it over here in the corner or wherever you want it. And um, then I can click save. And now it's uploading that image up to my PDF. Now I just need to tell the system on which sheet it wants this letterhead. So if you scroll down a little bit, you can see here it says apply letterheads to. I'm gonna apply letterhead number one to my compiler's report. So I'm going to tick that. I'm going to apply it. And again, just takes a second or two to regenerate the financials. But there you go. I can see you've got my letterhead in my compiler's report. So that's um, yeah, just one of the, the nice things there. Headers and footers. This is, it just manages and controls how our page numbers look, where your page number sits. You can change the color of your page number. You can add custom footers. So if you've got an issue on the cash flow that you want to highlight or something like that, go in, type on the cash flow custom footer, um, you know, whatever you want over here. Just type it in and apply. And the system is going to add that custom footer onto our cash flow sheet. So there you go. Uh, my gibberish is there into the cash flow statement. The notes section, very similar. We've got a bunch of options controlling our notes. It controls where our note number sits in line with the headings or in the margins. We can choose the, the, the spacing for our, um, for our notes. So you'll see we've got an interesting case here. I've got, if we, if we go through and look at let's say these notes, and we, we don't want it to split a note in half. Let me just see if I've got one. Uh, it doesn't look like I've got a note that's splitting in half, but generally what we can do is we can switch around these to, to change where the page break was. So if I want each note on its own page, I can switch that on, apply it, and it's gonna go and make that change and, and 
change up the file completely for me. Um, but you've got all of those different options on your side. And now you can see I've got each and every note on its, uh, on its single page. It looks a bit crazy, but I've got that option. Um, and we can also change that down to just notes, paragraphs, and so on. Um, from there, once you're 100% happy with this file and you want to now you know, download this file so you can email it to your client or print it out, what we can do is click on this little button over here. It says download. Also print directly from here if you want. So download or print on your side. If you want to secure PDF, click there. You can download encrypted and um, all of that kind of thing. So you've got a few customization options there. So that is the, the print preview um, as well as the whole of the financials. Um, Earl, I see we are a bit tight on time. Do you want to take a look at the, uh, the um, electronic review? Um, perfect. Uh, I think so, Christo. We'll, we'll, do, we'll pop in electronic review and then file manager very briefly. And then um, if anybody has any questions, uh, I think I've been able to ask, answer pretty much everything that has come in so far. But yeah. uh, please feel free. Uh, we don't have to stop at five. We can carry on. We love this. So uh, if, yeah. you, if everybody wants to go make dinner, we can reconvene at six or seven. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep going. We've got XPR out. Just keep cover. going. It's fine. <laughs> Yeah, uh, uh, I think I think with XPR we, we might just run a, a separate session. Uh, yeah, yeah, session. definitely. Like a <laughs> definitely. bit easier. Um, otherwise, it starts as dinner and dessert. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> let me jump in here. Share my screen. Sure, okay. Thanks. Perfect. Man. Thanks so, so much, Krista. Okay, so to take us to five o'clock, very very quick, um, built in in DraftWorks uh, Cloud. We have an entire system behind called electronic review. And electronic review allows for two major items. It allows you to sign off either your financial statements or working papers or leads, basically any document that's within the, the structure, and sign it off as prepared if you are a trainee or reviewed if you have been assigned manager access or partner reviewed if you are a partner in your actual um classes um, for, for DraftWorks. So you can simply go and um, on allocation of the user, assign how they're going to fall in, their trainee manager and partner, and then those users will get assigned these different sign-offs. And it works beautifully in terms of going and actioning who has completed what, where, and when. So you can track exactly what is outstanding at, at any point in time. So if I jump, for example, to my, my financial statements, and I click prepared. It's going to say this has now been prepared by EJ Stainer. It's going to pop it into my electronic review as well. Uh, so you can see, there we go, prepared. So I can see that the financial statements have been prepared and they are now ready for review. And it will lock who's worked on the file. Furthermore, we can go and we can actually now start to assign tasks and add notes. So if I'm busy reviewing this file, I can go and I can add a note. And I can uh, go and I can call this SAFP issues, assign to, assign it to whoever is in our, uh, our practice. And status is going to be an open note. I'm raising it. You do have options of addressed or closed, but we don't need that when we're adding a note. And then there are note types. For now, just keep to note with audit, we're going to use the other three but just for a simple note, keep it as note and same with risk top, leave that um, undone unless you're raising a risk or something in an audit. Then we're gonna put the detail here and that's gonna be whatever it is. So for example, um, mine is why is this here? Okay, and save. That pops up. This is gonna be a note that whenever I open up the financial statements, I'm gonna see it here. If I want to now tackle that, as uh, the person that the note is addressed to, I can come in, I'll be, uh, then be able to go to my electronic review, uh, see the note that has been added, go and address the note. So I can quickly go through, I'll pretend I'm gonna be Jeremy and uh, I'll go into Zahn, I'll fix, I'll remove that edit. 
go back to my electronic review and I can now say, pretending to, to be Jeremy, of course, I can now say, you know what, I have addressed it. Fix my boo-boo, okay? Change from open to addressed. So you as the uh, manager or partner knows that that has now been addressed. I can go, I can review it as a manager partner. And if I'm happy, I can then choose to close the note. So it has now been addressed. And you see how the color changes. So I know that everything under the electronic review for Ifra's SME has been addressed and I can move on. But we do just tell you that there is one note that's available. Okay, Fantastic little system um, just to raise notes and queries throughout your financial statements, throughout your working papers, and have a discussion back and forth between yourself, the manager, the partner, whomever it may be on the actual engagement and resolve any issues that have been raised. Okay. Um, that's that. Please shout if there's any questions uh, around it. Um, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. You, of course, also have the ability to set something as not applicable. So if you're in a working paper and it's not applicable, hit not applicable, it will go and it will sign it um, out as not applicable. And that will then get a blue shading or as an exception, something that you need to come back and you need to have a look at. Okay. So that's something that's pretty cool. Um, then... Last quick one before the year end close um, or, or the roll forward, as we call it. Uh, Christo, if you're happy, if I'll just run through that at the same time. Otherwise, you're welcome yep. to. No, go cool. for it all. Great, thanks. So, file manager, file manager. Now we're working in the cloud. We need to upload our working papers or we need to upload any um, audit evidence or anything. It may be an AMORT schedule, fixed asset register. Whatever it may be, we want all those documents to form part of our working papers. So in two years' time, if I come back to this file, I need to refer back and I need to figure out why calculation was made. Um, and that's what we're going to use File Manager for. It's super simple. We click on File Manager. We can then see the structure. That structure emulates the top of here. And I can choose now to go in, for example, Working Papers and into a section. And I can either create a file or I can upload an existing file. So we can go and we can say, you know what, I would like to um, upload an image or a TB. So I hit a demo TB, click upload. It's going to now upload it and it's going to be available for me to work on. Okay. So simple, quick and easy. Um, where did I pop it to? There we go, a demo TB. And just use or rename it to use the, the indexing. But it's as easy as that. And then when this is open, we of course get all the cool things that we can do, hyperlinks, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's, it's straightforward and, and simple. Love that little file manager. Use it. It's great. Okay. Now, lastly, when we're done with the uh, TV, the financial statements, all the working papers, everything's signed off. Everything's been addressed under electronic review. And I go, fantastic. I'm done. I now need to new, you do next year's or we're coming in a year's time. And I want to do uh, next year's file. We can jump into the company that we were busy working with. And we go to something called Rollford. Now, Rollford is simply just going to be moving this file into the next year. So for example, I have ABC, other company 2021. If I now want to start on 2022's financial statements, I'll run a roll forward and it will now go and create my 2022 file, but it's gonna bring in all the information from the prior years into my next year. So I don't have to redo the financial statements or anything cosmetic. I don't have to redo my linking. I don't have to redo my client setup. All that information is there, there for year two. So it's super, super um, quick when it hits year two. Uh, five minutes to get to a draft. Again, it all, uh, it all relates back to that, that final CV that you get from a client or that you process. Uh, if there is, it hasn't been tax raised, et cetera, you're going to have to go and raise uh, if, if they have taxed. Okay, but... The roll forward is, is super simple. You get two options, year in close, which will automatically create 2022 for me. Balance sheet roll forward. This option will take my 
my closing balance sheet items and put them into my opening balance next year. This is the case if you have clients where you just import the movement and you maintain their closing balances, then the perfect thing to use is balance sheet roll forward. Or it's a small little property company and you just want to journalize the movements through. Do opening balance sheet roll forward, it's going to work like a horizontal GL. Then we select the framework. So we, we chose if it was me earlier and compilation. Happy with that. We want to roll forward into next year or into next month if we're doing management accounts. We want to roll forward the current financial statements for all those cosmetics that we've already done. There is an option to choose brand new to go to the next year, but um, I'm not really a fan of that unless there's been something specific you've had to do for the client and you've had to butcher the financial statements. Oh, please don't butcher the financials. Um, there's an option there too. And then, of course, a very cool one going move current notes to prior. So um, if you've gone and done your additions, your disposals in your PPNE note, we want to move all of that from this year into my comparative note for next year. So I don't have to redo that. Click that. And then by default, we update the response, the directors, and all the reports with the latest and greatest. So, for example, when COVID hit, or if there's been an adjustment to um, any of the reports, we'll update that automatically on Roll Forward. If you are doing a customized director's report, this is something that we actually might remove in the future. Unclick that. We don't want to overwrite your work. Okay. So this is something that will potentially change in the future. It's We're just assessing now. And then any disclosure updates, uh, we can now have the option to apply. So if leases come into EFRES SME, this will pop up as an option to then apply the, the leases update uh, to EFRES SME or anything else, for example, the, the tax rates, and that will happen automatically. And then the final last one is the ability to roll forward any working papers. So if you have uploaded your fixed asset recon, or you've done a nice template for VAT turnover recon, or you have the AML schedules that you've uploaded, you want to use that in the next year? Just simply go and select them here to roll forward. And then it's automatically going to take it into next year's file. It's going to give me a price. I'm going to go cool. And uh, it's going to create my next year's file for me. And you're done. Okay. I'm going to go import the current year TV, open up my financial statements. We're at an instant draft. Okay. Makes life so quick, so easy. Here's my 2022. I just have to import my TV for my 2022. Done and dusted. Okay. So it makes life easy. And with that, it's five o'clock. Um, Krista, thank you. Uh, I think everybody can agree with me. Krista did a, a fantastic job. It's lovely to listen to instead of talk for a change. Um, Krista has been behind with all the developers, constantly giving feedback to Dev, and Dev's been working with all of us in, in the team to, to put up DraftWorks Cloud. So it's come a long way. It's still got a long way to do. There's a lot of cool things that we're busy, um, that we're busy working with. So Christo, a big thank you for, for leading that. Uh, the dev team, Brett, for, for leading the, the team. Yes, we've, we've come a, a long way. Um, yeah, thank you for all the magnificent work. Uh, Morris for Fire Sheet. She's uh, false, false, Shamina. Debbie, uh, it just it just goes on and on. It's the entire team. Uh, all the support staff couldn't have done without you. I'm, I'm sure everybody can relate to the support staff being beyond excellent. I mean, they're, they're just absolutely superheroes. And of course, thank you to all of our clients. Please let us know how we can improve. We work on it daily to improve it. We take your feedback seriously. So when you, when you do log out and you please provide feedback, let us know what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong. Um, love the, the feedback. If it's negative, please let us have it. We need to know what, what we can improve upon. Okay. So that's something that, that's super important to us. Um, okay. Any, any questions, Krista, anything from, from yourself? No, thanks all. I think um, I'm good. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks a lot for everyone for joining and all the great questions and all the great ideas and feedback that you give. Um, I think that's what, makes draft works what it is at the end of the day so thanks a lot for everyone for joining and and yeah good for for our future is going to be exciting awesome thanks thanks krista
thank you everybody okay. i will we will run it a little bit i see there are a few questions still so i'll, I'll run through and, and i'll answer those and um, again thank you everybody here for being absolutely amazing enjoy your evening we'll chat uh, very soon let us know how we can make it better take care cheers guys <laughs>